granddaddy of them all. Dating back to the days when, if you can believe this, European riders still own this sport. Tonight, a trio of the strongest, fastest, and most talented Supercross racers ever tackle the toughest Supercross track of them all. But one of them is a big question mark. The 36th running of the Daytona Supercross is live on speed. It has become a familiar scene here at Daytona over the last three and a half decades. Supercross, although night Supercross is something rather new and perhaps a bit more exciting than the, well, 30 odd years that preceded it. We're glad you're here for the party. And for those of us who have seen all but one of them, gosh, it's a little troubling to think that there have been 35 Daytona Supercrosses. Hello everyone, I'm Dave Despain. This race started in the infield as an AMA National with 250 and 500 cc machines in 1971, if you can believe that. It has progressed through a road race supercross doubleheader. Now it has a day of its own, and for the last three years, a night of its own here in the middle of Bike Week. And what a spectacular night it is. Fireworks, crowd gathered, but a very big question mark about tonight's race that we'll get to in a moment. Let's talk about how the show is going to unfold. It's a progressive program, if you will. Heat races leading into the main event. It is work just to get to the final and the opportunity to ride all those grueling laps on this very, very difficult, largest, fastest, and most difficult Supercross track of them all. Have a look at the crowd. Let's find out about one of the key players in the game tonight. We're headed topside to the guys who will call the action, Ralph Shaheen, and a man who's done a lot of laps on this racetrack, Denny Stevenson. Thanks, Dave. Hi, everybody. Yes, there is a big story coming into tonight's race. Chad Reed, the great Australian racer, former champion of the series, leading the points race coming into Daytona, got injured earlier this week. Denny, how tough is it going to be for Chad to race tonight? Well, as we learned in practice, he, he only rode a little bit of practice one, did not ride practice two, and right now, Chad is beat up. He dislocated his shoulder, and as we've learned, if you hope to run with Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart, you better be 100%. And right now, Chad Reed's going to have to get through tonight just survival. He's got his hands full. Let's show you how tight the point standings are in the AMA series. Remember, this is not a world round. And Chad Reed just has a one-point lead over Ricky Carmichael in the AMA point standings coming into tonight's race here in Daytona. There's a good look at it. You can see James Stewart just 17 behind Ivan Tedesco, the other Makita Suzuki rider, giving chase in the point standings from fourth. And Nick Way, the very fast privateer, 58 back in fifth. For more on the story with Chad Reed, here's Chris Devota. A story indeed, Ralph. You know, all season long, it's been the big three leapfrogging, seesawing back and forth, back and forth again in the points. But yes, now this injury to Chad Reed has really opened up tonight's race, a big race at the World Center of Racing for two guys at least. I think every weekend, you know, Ricky and Chad, they all go out to beat me. And, uh, you know, I just I'm having, you know, little stupid things that's holding me back, you know, the first corner thing. But, you know, I'm really happy where I'm at. You know, it's my first, you know, full year, you know, well, hopefully I <laughs> continue the rest of the year in the 250s. And, uh, you know, I couldn't ask for anything better, help with Cal Psych and all these guys. It's, it's been fun. You know, we gave up some points at St. Louis, and uh, we're looking forward to getting back where we were before that race. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great night. Uh, James is riding really good. I feel really good. And, uh, you know, as far as Chad, I don't really know what's happening. You know, I haven't, I haven't heard much, but I know he didn't ride the second practice, but he'll be good in the race. I know it's been a tough you know, 48 hours for you. Kind of where do you sit as far as is it just kind of survival tonight? I know you took in one practice, second practice, took it off and did a little resting. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, word gets out fast. But, uh, you know, yesterday I took a fall and uh, separated my shoulder. So, uh, you know, last night this, I said to myself, there's, there's no possible way that I could even ride tonight. And, uh, you know, with the help of some great people and uh, the Asterix medic, you know, all those guys, uh, We'll get some shots and uh, go out there and try salvage. And, uh, you know, like I said, this place is a really, really cool place. And uh, it's a shame that I have to uh, just make it through it rather than uh, get out there and charge. But, uh, you know, that's life. And, 
you know, I just really look forward to the weekend. You know, I think as bad as it is, I think we can still uh, still be on the podium. <laughs> Chad Reed definitely in pain. He did not take hot laps with the other riders. In fact, for rider intros, he came out, kind of gave a fist pump with his left hand. His right arm basically just dangling like when your arm falls asleep. He is definitely in pain. Almost looks like a zombie on the right side. So we'll have to see if he can struggle through tonight. And guys, this is big not just because of the race, not just the win, the points battle. These are huge bragging rights for the manufacturers. Bike week down here in Daytona. Everybody on hand, all the big manufacturers. You win on a Sunday, Saturday, if you will, Friday, if you will sell on Monday. We've heard that one before. Well, that we have, Chris. And let's talk about that pain. D Denny, we know all these guys are tough, but a shoulder injury, how different is that than, say, an arm or wrist or something else? You know, your shoulder is obviously everything you work a motorcycle with. And Daytona is one of the most demanding tracks in the series. And so he's going to have his hands full, like I said, the big jumps, the whoops. Uh, it would be very surprising if Chad can even get to that main event. Let's show you what's going on points-wise in the other series that we'll be talking about here tonight. This is a point standings for the Supercross Lights East Coast Series, and it is a Honda on top of that board. Their young rider, Davey Millsaps, has an 18-point lead over Chris Gossler on the Kawasaki, and Davey Millsaps maybe stands a really good shot of getting a Honda a big win here tonight. We talked to him earlier. You're leading the points battle in this in this East Coast division. You're one to beat every week. Why is that? What do you bring to the table? You know, I just uh, I've been training really hard for this, and you know, I've just been trying to uh, be consistent. You know, since I started racing this year, and you know, so far it's it's been working, and you know, I'm trying to bring it into this race what I have been the other races, and we'll you know, see if I can come out on top. Well, it is a Daytona Supercross by Honda. Could Davey Millsaps win it here tonight? Well, he's won two of the past three, but Josh Grant, a fellow Honda rider, shows he's got the speed to run with Davey. It could be a two Honda rider tonight, a two Honda rider battle tonight in Daytona. Well, there is another huge story in the Honda camp, and with more on that story, here's Dave Spain. The story, of course, is the unfortunate injury for Ernesto Fonseca. He suffered an injured, uh, fractured C7 vertebra earlier this week in a uh, crash on his practice track. Had six hours of surgery yesterday to stabilize that fracture. The doctors termed the uh, surgery a success. His condition is stable. He is in good spirits. A lot of swelling still in the spinal uh, column that is uh, making it difficult to uh, come up with a final prognosis. Uh, he has use of his arms at this point and uh, is feeling very upbeat about the situation. I think it goes without saying that all of us send our best wishes to Ernesto as we get set to go racing here tonight in the Daytona Supercross by Honda. It's going to be a great show. Don't go anywhere. It's a technological revolution from the leader in four-stroke technology. We increased horsepower without adding weight and added a unique dual exhaust system for perfect balance in the loops and in the turns. The new Honda CRF 250R. Victory. Bikes on the line. We're ready to go racing. Let's go topside for the action. Ralph Denny. All right, Dave. Here we go. This is Supercross Lights Heat Number One as we get set for. The first round of racing, the riders all gated up and set to go. 32nd board goes sideways. And we're going. Looks like the number 42 of Tommy Hahn and that Samsung so behind it, grabbing the big hole shot with Chris Goose Gossler in second. Gossler laid down some very fast lap times. Oh, it looks like Sean Hamlin down yep. number 52 there, Ralph. Hamlin on the Suzuki, the Rockstar Suzuki down in the first corner. Love this shot, Denny. Yeah, they've smoothed out the track a little bit since practice. The work to do is we're very rutted, cupped out from practice right now. You can see they grooved them down a little bit, a little bit smoother. These lights guys able just to blitz right across the tops of them. Thomas Hahn out of Decatur, Texas on the Honda. Some different terrain on this racetrack, different colors of dirt we'll see throughout the night. Some of it is dirt, a lot of it is sand. Yeah, they bring in a lot of clay for these jumps. They want to try and keep the track from breaking out too much, at least the jumps part of the track. The rest of that is deep sand. It, used, it was grass when we started practice today. These, uh, these lights and these supercross bikes have torn it up. It's getting very rough, and as we've learned in Daytona, as the night progresses, this track is going to get rough and very demanding. Top nine riders transferring out of this straight to the main event tonight. The rest of the field in the 
Supercross Light Series will get a shot at a last chance qualifier. Whoops, a little bit deeper tonight. Yeah, I was walking the track and the track walking. And they were about waist deep in some sections. Very commanding, very challenging, but that is what Daytona is known for. They tend to get a little edged out and cupped, like I said, but they've, they've smoothed them out a little bit. But, you know, as the race is prolonged, it's going to be very demanding. Good look at William Browning out of Ohio on the Suzuki. Browning right now running in six. He's holding down a transfer spot. Now I'm on right of that blue motorcycle right there. That's Brian Johnson. On the star race in Lucas Oil Smith Optics, Yamaha. He's also from work living with Davey Millsap there in Cairo, Georgia. It just seems to be the hot bed for motocrosses right now. Brian Johnson, one of the riders, using that Millsap's training facility, picking up the pace each and every week. He started out the season on the West Coast lights, broke his arm, put in some plates and some pins, took some time off, and he's back racing. Johnson is fighting for fourth position right now with Platt on the 344. That's Dusty Platt out of. Canada. And Clatt takes the spot for now. Platt on the Blackfoot Honda. This last weekend in Indianapolis, the Blackfoot Honda guys got their motorcycle stolen right out of their big rig in front of the hotel. They had to go to the dealership, get some bikes, and get ready for the race. And this weekend, Dusty Clatt turned things around. They're currently running fourth in this heat race, number one. Mental approach that you have to take to Daytona since it is such a unique type of circuit. Do you, do you approach this track differently than you would any other? Well, I think a little bit. You, you're going to do some outdoor practicing current, you know, before the event. You know, instead of just going out to the practice track, slamming a bunch of laps, you're going to break it up. Go check out your outdoor track where the track's a little bit rougher. The, the corners are more firm and big banks. And, uh, you know, you definitely come with a little different approach. Now that the race is at night, I don't think it's quite as hot, obviously, and demanding as it maybe it was when during the day. But still, this track is tough. It breaks down, and you definitely have to come with a much different approach than you would if it was just a normal indoor stadium. Good battle for second here with the 102 of Chris Gossler. And he's being hounded by the 37 of Kelly Smith out of Michigan on his Honda. That's Gossler right there in the green Kawasaki, number 102. And boy, we've seen some great riding out of Gossler this year. Yeah, Goose has been a great story. You know, we can't say it enough that he, he basically begged for his ride at Pro Circuit. Mitch said, you know what, I'm going to give you a ride, but you better perform. And Goose has done a great job. Chris Gossler laying down some fast laps and putting himself in, up front. And Smith is changing him, and we'll be right back to Daytona. He transfers straight from this to tonight's 15 rider, 22 lap main event. One thing you're going to see about the Supercross track in, in Daytona is you're going to see guys who are generally better outdoor riders. And I think Kelly Smith is a little bit better of an outdoor rider, perhaps, in Supercross. He's struggled the last few rounds in his motorsports outlet Honda. Had some bad luck. He's had some decent finishes, but this is more of an outdoor type of track. And I think you're going to see Kelly excelling tonight. He was the third fastest in that second practice session. And I think it just plays right into Kelly Smith's hands. Get out here in the sand and uh, change up to the Supercross a little bit. No problems for this rider right here. Hahn has had this one ever since the gate drop. And I think a lot of that as well. Tommy Hahn has struggled the last few rounds of Supercross. He's proven to be a good outdoor rider. Out here in Daytona, you bring out some of the best characteristics if you're a good outdoor rider. Tommy Hahn out front just pulled away in this heat race. This is the last lap. Making his way to the checkered flag. Here he comes, your winner. Tommy Hahn takes it. He's going on to the main. Remember, it is the top nine that transfers straight to the main event. This is seventh and eighth right here that we're watching. Browning and Johnson. And here's a transfer behind him. That position right now belongs to Osborne. Zach Osborne on the 168. This is Zach Osborne's first professional race. He's an amateur national champion, won many rounds, and puts it in the main event in his first attempt. He's going, and we're going to Krista. Thomas Hahn, our winner in heat number one. I know this is big for you. You've coming back from some injuries, just getting back on the bike recently. Is this a big statement to get this heat win? Yeah, it's a really big statement. Um, I haven't really had the best of luck so far this year, so, you know, it's, it's good to get out there and get a good race under my belt and give me a little confidence. And you have that outdoor background, too. Is that helping with this track here tonight? Oh, definitely. You know, I, I like outdoors a little bit more than Supercross, and, uh, you know, I think it shows a little bit. All right, Thomas Hahn, we haven't talked about him much this year. We may be talking about him quite a bit tonight. Well, Tommy will be one of the rest of these nine that are all going on to the main event. The Riders in yellow. Brandon Jetsman has got a little work cut out for him and his Yamaha. 
Williams. He's going to be taking a trip into the last chance qualifier, hoping to get one of those final spots in tonight's main event. On Gosler Smith, your top three. The lights are on. It's a beautiful night here in Daytona. A great night for Supercross. We're glad to have you with us. Stay with us for more here on Speed. Look out, we got trouble. The toughest trucks and the toughest drive. Dave, thanks. The riders for heat number two are in the gate. Let's show you our Dunlop starting list as we get set for this one. And we've talked all about them. Now we get to see them. Davey Millsaps and Josh Grant, the two riders who have really been kind of pacing this series. Yeah, it's not often you get a chance at the two fastest guys uh, together in a heat race. The way the points have kind of laid out, we get a preview of this main event with Davey Millsaps, Josh Grant, the two Honda riders. Another rider we've talked about a lot this season, Martin Davalis on that Lucas Oil Yamaha. The kid from Ecuador, living with Davey Millsaps as well, has done great. I uh, expect big things from him tonight as well. And Stefan Ricotta is in this one, and we've seen him pick up a lot of speed. And Matt Walker had a good run earlier today, and he's in this heat as well. Matt went down his preliminary qualifier to come from dead last, picked off a lot of guys and put it in this, uh, into the ninth program. And sometimes he kind of crashed. Matt's had some bad luck going this weekend. He's beat up a lot. He's got a lot of skid marks on him from mm -hmm. crash and practice in yeah. the races. I think maybe for a chance him to come through the pack, pass a lot of guys, put in the ninth program, I think that'll help with his confidence. Well, there's Josh Grant right there. Well, let's touch base with Krista. Guys, this is the race last year that Josh Grant feels really turned things around for him, gave him the momentum. He, of course, was in a great late race battle with Josh Hansen. Josh Hansen went on to win the race last year, but Josh Grant said that's when his confidence really turned around. Be careful, too. He and Davey Millsaps, they've had a little bit of run-in before. You'll remember a couple of races ago in Atlanta, Josh Grant did get the win there. So a little bit of controversy, a little beating and banging, but that's what we like to see, and these guys will be ready for it. Well, and add another twist to that story is the fact that Millsaps told me this morning during the rider walk-around that he'd been sick all week long. And I asked him, well, how close are you to being 100%? So uh, maybe 80, but if you're going to win here at Daytona, Denny, you can't be 80%. Well, we saw Davey Millsaps last weekend, and I think he was 100%, and, and Josh Grant had his number. Josh would have won that main event had he not crashed. I mean, obviously, crashing is a part of it, but he, he made a mistake when a lapper went down in front of him. But Josh Grant can run Davey Millsaps' pace, and if Davey's not 100% tonight, he's going to have his hands full. You've won here at Daytona. What did you do particularly well when you did that, that got you that victory? I think my be biggest benefit was I was fast in the whoops. And Daytona has a lot of whoop sections. I think they had a little bit more back then than they do tonight. A couple different sections that probably went from end to end. And that just helped me. Just keep the front end light and hanging off the back of the motorcycle like it did. And, you know, I think Davey Millsaps, he was just going so fast to the whoops earlier in practice. I mean, similar to James Stewart's speed. So, you know, that can be very, very beneficial for Dave. And it helped me back in the day. There's Stefan Ricotta right there, the number 21. The rider who's been working a lot on finding his speed lately. Davey, or Ste Stefan Ricotta has been finding a lot of personal demons in his past. He's gotten through that. He's back racing. He's on that uh, Motor World Yamaha. And it's just great to have Stefan Ricotta back here racing and, and getting everything back together in his life. Thirty-second board is up. Mechanics all leave the gate area. That board will go sideways. The board girl will vacate that section of racetrack and will be underway in just a few seconds after that board goes sideways. And then it's the land rush to turn one. And everybody you talk to will tell you the start is such a key to success in Supercross, more so than almost any other racing. Here we go. Couple of riders pushed up all the way past the tough blocks. Looks like Grant out front. Josh Grant, Martin Davalis up front as well. That is such a long start there, Ralph. I mean, that if, if you're inside a stadium, you'd be running from bleacher to bleacher, basically. That's get such a long run. And these guys coming to the whoop section right now. And Josh Grant makes a huge mistake. And yeah. down on the ground, he goes from first to last in a matter of seconds. Cannot say enough how challenging this track is, and it just reached up and grabbed Josh Grant. Oh, I'm sorry, it isn't That's Josh a 54. Grant. That was a 54 that went down there. Robert Keneary. There's Josh. There's Josh. Josh has such a huge lead. 24 He's on the 54 look very similar, and even their uh, riding gear is similar. Josh had broken away so quickly, already from the pack out front and running. And his nemesis, Davey Millsaps, right there in the second spot. 
Well, and Mill Sampson, we've talked about it, and not trying to beat Davey up over this because it, it has been something that we've talked about almost every week following the tour. His starts are just not his his big thing right now, but his speed, once he gets going, is huge. Yeah, he's proven to be one of the, obviously the fastest guy with two wins, but his starts have been very difficult. Last weekend, he got out with a good start, came out second uh, with Josh Grant out front, so obviously Davey's been working very hard in the starts and realizing it's much easier to win a race from the front of the pack than it, has to come, it is to come through the pack. Krista with more. Yeah, guys, you were talking about Davey Millsap starts. You know, he was joking today. He said, come on, give me a break. I've been good the last two weeks. Good for Davey is about getting out of there, you know, maybe fourth. And yeah, with this tough, long straightaway, he has an ability to at least pick up some speed. But he said it's really tough for him off the start gate on the throttle. So he said that's where he's been trying to work and been trying to improve. But he knows with long races like this that he at least has a chance to get back up. Well, the one thing about Davey is you're not going to wear him out physically. Now he's working very hard. I think he's learned a lot of lessons when he was on Suzuki. I, I, some people said he maybe was slacking a little bit. Since he's gotten to Honda, he seems to be a much smarter, stronger rider. And you can see him right there going through the whoops, just like we talked about the opening Ralph. Davey Millsap just blitzing across the tops of those whoops and made up a good second, second and a half on Josh Grant. Next lap round, it could be very interesting. That could be where a pass could be made. Josh Grant on the 24 has the lead. Two riders on Hondas. Millsaps on the 118. There's a good look at him. Coming through that rhythm section. Changed it up there. Josh Grant was jumping up over the top of those tabletops while Davey Millsaps was doing on, off. Uh, and it seemed to be much quicker because Millsaps is continually driving from top to top while Millsap, or Grant is catching air, jumping each one. Davey Millsaps seemed to be doing everything right right now. And remember, Millsaps was 18th in the main last year, looking for a heat win here if he can catch Josh Grant and get himself a great gate pick in the main event, which you will see here on Speed. Stay with us for the rest of the Daytona Supercross by Honda. We've got a new leader here at Daytona. Damian Millsaps on the 118 takes the lead away from Josh Grant when Grant bobbles through the whoop section, Denny, which you said was a huge key to this racetrack. Yeah, Davey just went across the top, so he's just hanging off the back of the motorcycle, went right down the center of the track. Josh Grant the hand is kind of trying to time it, jumped to it, he jumped off the side of the track, got in the tough locks a little bit, and that one mistake just opened up the door, and Davey Millsaps is their new leader. Coming towards that whoop section right here. And look at him just going across the tops of him. He's making it look so easy. He's not even hanging off the top, back of the bike, really. He's just getting the tops of him. Front wheel, rear wheel, front wheel, rear wheel, just tapping each one, getting right across the tops of him. His fastest lap time, Ralph, a 52.9. Josh Grant, a 52.8, almost two seconds quicker. Let's show you how he got the lead. You come in, you see Josh Grant. He's going to the left side of the whoops while Davey's just going right across the tops, right down the center. Josh gets off the side, collects into the tough blocks, and just like that. David Millsaps is out front and gone. White flag is out. One lap to go for Millsaps. You know, the thing about the whoops, too, Denny, is they can be a real mind game. You, you've got to have the right kind of focus to get through the, through the whoops. Some guys will spend too much time looking down as opposed to just picking a spot at the far end. You just come in with a lot of momentum. That's exactly what Davey's doing, and he's looking ahead, looking to the, to the whip ahead. He's not looking down like he said. We saw how challenged they could be last season when Ricky Carmichael went down in them. Confidence and just knowing, like you said, don't look down. Look far ahead. Look the next whip ahead of you, and you just blitz right across the tops of them. Davey Millsaps makes it look way too easy. He's making the whole track look easy right now. Millsaps 18th in the main event last year. The way he's running tonight, he can keep it together. He's certainly going to improve on that finishing position. Coming to the checkered flag, and Davey Millsaps is going straight to the main with a heat race win. Watching the battle for the final transfer spot, the 111. Holding that position right now, Jay Marmont. There's Jay. And 321 now, apparently on the bobble, Chad Ward. Ward. We'll see what the official timing and scoring shows us. Looks like Ward's going to get the final transfer spot. Show the Honda Rider going on to the main. And there's Davey Millsaps. And Chris is right there with him. 
Yeah, we caught up with our winner taking his helmet off. You know, we talked about Davy starts, and he said it doesn't really matter as long as he gets the finish. That was the finish he wanted. The winner of Heat 2, did you learn something for the main event? Um, yeah, you know, uh, I got off to a good start there, and, uh, you know, I just rode my own race for a while, and uh, Grant made the mistake, and I went by him, and, you know, I've been sick all week, and, uh, you don't have to back away this time, but, uh, you know, it's, it's been hard to breathe all week, and it's hard to breathe out here, but, you know, I'm going to try to put 15 consecutive laps in, and uh, hopefully it'll be like that. All right, and would he, uh, if he hadn't bobbled, would you have been able to catch him? Well, uh, you know, I, uh, it all depends. You know, I caught him, I caught him that time, and, uh, you know, he pulled me in some sections, and I caught him in a lot of sections, and, you know, it all depends on uh, how the race went, so. You know, he talks about being sick all week, so I'm going to go ahead and back away and get far, far away from Davey Millsaps. Smart move. The way he's riding, though, Krista, you might see him again before the night is over. Remember, Honda hasn't won a lights main event here since 1993 when Doug Henry did it. That could change tonight the way Davey Millsaps is riding. You can't count out Josh Grant. Remember, he led a huge chunk of that heat race. Stefan Ricotta is going on to the last chance qualifier. Well, we're coming back to Daytona, the Supercross Series, getting ready to get in the game for their first heat. You don't want to miss it. We're going to bring it to you right here on Speed. Check out the dude for a day. Supercross style sweepstakes. You could win a Kawasaki KX450F plus a trip to Las Vegas in the AMA Supercross finale. To enter, you want to go to speedtv.com. The weekly code word Vegas. Vegas. Get all the details and official rules at speedtv.com. Presented by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. I want to show you uh, what has been a bizarre week uh, for Travis Pastrana, but first let's say hello to Ricky Johnson. Glad to be Always here. Always nice to have the former Supercross champion, former Daytona winner alongside. I'll get your comments after this. Let's go ahead and roll the tape and then we'll talk about it. Travis Pastrana came down here hoping to do a triple for the week. It started with the Grand National Cross Country Race. He'd never run one of these before. It's a kick start race. They charged down to the first turn. Hey, he didn't get a very good start. You don't want to be back there because that's where everybody will fall down, including Travis, who recovered nicely, kept the thing running, gets the clutch in, gets back on side, doesn't run over the course worker. And lo and behold, by the end of the first lap, depending on who you believe, is either third or fourth. But he holed the radiator in that first turn incident, so all those passes were for nothing. Next night, where is he? At the short track race at Memorial Stadium. Had never had a steel shoe on in his life. Came in after the first practice and said, this thing doesn't have a front brake on it. Well, Travis, we don't use front brakes in flat track race. Well, can you put one on it? Trust me, you don't need it. Well, he didn't. He went out, he didn't know he didn't make the show, but he was within eight riders of making the field, had never sat on one of those before. Today, practice, look at this. The backflip comes up just a little bit short. Travis is on the ground, but the fans went crazy. And we're gonna look at this now in, uh, in full speed from the helmet cam. Ah, so close, so close and yet so far. So that is Travis Pastrana thus far in this uh, in this Supercross uh, weekend, in this whole Daytona Bike Week scene. Give me just a, a quick take on what makes the guy tick. Well, see, Andy Grider, Greg Godfrey, uh, Travis and myself all went down and did the Baja 1000 this year. And so we were busting him all day long. You've got to get to the next point. You'll die out there. There's nobody to pick you up. There's no ambulance right there. You've got to get to the finish. So I was really excited. And we did well. We ended up third unofficially. We got disqualified for no transponder, blah, blah, blah. But Travis finished the Baja 1000 last year. Coming into here, we thought, you know, three hours, he can be smart. And he was. He, was, he really wasn't riding over his head. That first turn fall, just a little mishap, and a radiator happens. You know, the dirt track thing, I was pretty impressed because you know I, went, I was out there the two nights watching those guys and the dirt track crew is really riding hard so it, it was he wasn't gonna make it backflip in supercross do I understand that got him in trouble yes got him in a lot of trouble it was it was a day qualifier Travis has not been running all year long so he has to run a day qualifier to get into the night program he's winning his seat He's always wanted to do a backflip, he said. I always wanted to do a backflip. But you know what? He's never backflipped a four-stroke other than a DRZ 400 into a foam pit. And so now, first time on, a, on not, a, not a freestyle jump, but a finish line jump that's nowhere near as steep, he almost pulls it off. But uh, 
Amy had a few words with him after that. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> no mas. Right. Let's shift gears and talk about Michael Rocco. It is official. He's retired. He got hurt at Indianapolis. This would have been his 230th Supercross start if he'd been able to come here. That is just phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, he they call him the Rock, and he, you know, he's like the Iron Man. He's been around forever. He's one of them riders when he was young, real rambunctious, a lot of crashes, just really going for it all the time. But Mike was one of those guys year after year kept himself in top shape and was always there every race. So Michael Rocco will retire after 19 years in the game. Heard in Indianapolis, which is really unfortunate. He's an Indiana guy, but uh, put up some pretty impressive numbers. And that is a guy that is going to be missed out here in this game. Michael Rocco, have fun. Enjoy your retirement. We're going to miss you. Uh, one more guy we should talk about. He's gone from showtime to part time. Jeremy McGrath and maybe a perspective Looking at him, watching Ricky and what he's doing, Ricky Carmichael, just Jeremy's impact on this sport. Well, you know, Jeremy took the sport. You know, I did, Hannah did a good job, I did a good job, but Jeremy put Supercross in front of the mainstream with 1 800 Collect and a lot of the mainstream marketing. Then he went out and just demolished everybody's record and was there every weekend, consistent championship after championship and win after win so he really was the, he was the king of supercross and uh, for him now he's backed off just a little bit running six races and almost making the podium week after week so the guy is a stud but now his now his <laughs> part role is at honda is similar to mine at suzuki help the younger guys move ahead let's find out more about what uh, showtime is up to lately we uh, caught up with him spent a little time with him a little less racing in his life and a little more of well let's have a look This is one of our days out at the uh, test track in Corona, California, and our guys are uh, doing a little bit of testing today, but mostly uh, training and just doing laps. This is their time to work out out here on the track and and practice, uh, you know, corners and, and jumps. I tell you what, we've got a really good group of guys working together this year. Our mechanics, riders, everybody seems to be gelling really good. Jeremy's an instrumental part of our testing program and. I think he can uh, relate comments from the bike. Things are kind of clicking. We started this program about two years ago, and things have progressed into me riding some races and, and mentoring these guys a little bit. And I mean, I couldn't ask for anything better. When I actually retired from full-time racing, I was a little freaked out. You know, what's going to happen to me? I mean, retirement at 31 is, is weird. So this has been a blessing in disguise for sure. Honda has really come up with a good program for me. I love working with them. I won many championships with them, and we have a really great team right now. Dealing with uh, some of the younger riders, he's got a lot of experience. He's got a real well-rounded uh, career, so he can deal well with it. Jeremy's, I think that's kind of why he's on the team, to watch us, and to, you know, if he sees something, he'll pull us aside and say, hey, you, know, you, need, you need to work on that and show me how to do it, so it works out. Transitioning yourself from being a racer guy into part-time rider, and R&D tester, developer, mentor. It is an evolution. And, you know, I never really imagined myself hanging around, kind of trying to help. And what makes me think that I, you know, should be able to say, hey, do it this way or try this, you know? But it's really been a good transition period. Honda's been great, and uh, I'm having a blast. That, that's how you do yeah. it. Easy. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. Me and Jeremy were working on that triple out of the turn. My problem was I was just gassing it all the way from the beginning of the turn and not getting a pop. So Jeremy was just telling me you need to come into the turn a little bit slower, set up, and then gas it right at the end and then sit down at the end so then it pops you up over the top. You know, it's just little things like that, but without Jeremy, I, I'd be over there all day long just dork myself out on that jump. So little tips like that help. These guys are really receptive. So it, it makes me feel good because I don't, you know, I, I'm definitely not the bossy kind of guy that's going to go, hey, man, you need to do it this way, this way. They have to just take what they need, throw out the rest, and try and apply it to their riding. And, you know, if I can help them 5 10%, then uh, I've achieved kind of what we're after here. Being a mentor, you know, being able to race a little bit, test the bikes and, and stuff like that. Like I said, it's something I never imagined, but it's kind of turned into this really, really cool thing. I'm excited about it. If we can grow the sport and I can help, then uh, all the better.
I'm thinking about vintage motocross. I'm thinking we go find Hannah. We get you to lose a little weight. We get <laughs> Jeremy. Thanks. What do you think? You got, well, I, I think keep thinking it. It's a, it's a good idea. It looks good on paper, but in reality, I don't know if we could get Hannah out of an airplane. And uh, I don't know if there's enough money to get all three of us together anymore. <laughs> I was just kidding about the weight. I wish I was in your shape. I know you got work to do. Can you come back a little bit later in the Most show? Most definitely. We've got some other stuff we want to talk to you about. Ricky Johnson uh, making a guest appearance here and, and pleased to have him here. We've got a lot more work to do tonight as the Supercross weekend continues. And then we'll grab a quick night's sleep and come back tomorrow and do it. Big time with the road racers. We're back on the road course at Daytona. Two huge events. First up, 11 a.m., opening round of the 2006 AMA Superbike Championship. Matt Milladen starting his title defense from the pole. At 1.30, we wrap things up with the 65th annual Daytona 200. The Formula Extreme kickoff for this year. Exclusive live coverage starting at 11 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. It's only on speed. I expect you to be here. We will be back at Daytona for more Supercross action. Don't go anywhere. Join all these crazies in the grandstand. The excitement is just getting good. Welcome back to Daytona. Huge crowd. How this event has grown over the years and the night racing adding a whole new dimension. It's just such a cool show to see at night and a great place to be on a Friday night in Daytona as we head for the conclusion of this 65th Daytona Bike Week. It's time for Supercross heat race action. Let's go back to the booth. You know, Dave, flipping the switch on the lines for Supercross here, I think really made a huge difference and it just took this event to a whole nother level. And now we're gonna get to see it elevated to its highest form. Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart in heat number one. There's a great look at the man who is the four time champ, Ricky Carmichael. Number four on the factory Suzuki. And there's the number seven, the man who's been chasing him all year and who wants the crown. James Stewart, the factory Kawasaki rider. This is exciting. This is the first time we're going to see James Stewart race the Supercross class at Daytona. And he's going to do it with Ricky Carmichael. As we just saw in the lights class, the two fastest guys, the top two from last weekend in the heat race together. Boom, we get it again here in the Supercross class, a preview to this main event. And both Florida residents, lots of friends, lots of family in the grandstands, lots of pressure to perform both of these riders. Well, Ricky Carmichael's going for his fifth win here at Daytona, a record he was hoping to get last year when Chad Reed put an end to that. James Stewart in hand, looking to get his first and get, put his name in the record books. Winning Daytona, if you're going to win one race, like Anaheim won, this is one of them to win. Here's a look at the Dunlop start list. Some other big names in here. Heath Boss on the factory Yamaha, Billy Leninovich. We see him out here tonight. Normally one of the lights racers from the West Coast. Getting ready. James Stewart just rockets out in that first turn. Man. Drops the front end a little bit, and the first turn does not go down while we collect a handful. I see Justin Keeney trying to get back on the track. And Carmichael's in second, right behind him. So here we go. James Stewart out in front on the seven, and the four is right there with him. Here comes Carmichael. And Michael Byrne sits in third. Heath Boss in fourth. David Villam in fifth. What an incredible camera angle right there. Just seeing how fast these guys are blitzing across the whoops. In practice, James Stewart laid down the fastest lap times. But as we're learning week in, week out, the fastest lap times in practice seem to be kind of meaningless. And when you get these two riders together, whoever seems to be guy in second seems to just learn the pace and pick up some fast lines from the guy up front. Right now, Ricky Carmichael going to try to do that with James. The other thing, too, Denny, is as much as we see going on here that we're learning from this for the main event as to who's got how much speed, and Carmichael really kind of bobbled that section there. The other thing is these two riders are testing themselves and finding out what they need to do to set up for the main event. And we've heard James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael say already this season, I'm not going to show them everything I got before I get to the main. Well, there's practice speed and there's race speed. And each weekend we see these guys drop almost over a second, a second and a half each time they get into these heat races, going much quicker than they ever did in practice. And Carmichael's talked about how he needs to pick up his first few laps. He doesn't come out quite as explosive as James Stewart. And right now we're kind of seeing it. Ricky made a couple mistakes, over jumped a couple sections. And boom, just like that, James Stewart has opened up, I'd say almost close to a three second lead. Oh. 
And if you're going to pick up the pace uh, and see what your competitor is doing, you're going to have to get closer than where Ricky's at right now. He's right now not able to see the breaking points, the acceleration points that James is using, or even in his lines. James is pulling away very quickly right now, and Ricky's not going to get that benefit to see what James and how he's getting it done. James winning a 50.8. Carmichael in the 52-second range. Ricky's really going to have to step it up. Yeah, I mean, it was just an opening lap, but Ricky made a handful of mistakes. James in her hand wrote a flawless first lap, and boom, just like that, he's opened up a plus three second lead, and it's now James' race to get out front, and, and he can sh doesn't have to worry about showing his cards now because Ricky's not close enough to see some of those lines and where James is picking up the pace. Top four transfer out of the Supercross heats. Michael Byrne on the 26. According to timing and scoring, sits in third position right now. Heath Voss on the 13. And the Yamaha would hold the final transfer spot, and David Villeman would be one spot out of it on the 12. There's Voss. Voss has done such a good job with Yamaha. He's gotten a great opportunity with his factory equipment and stuff, but he's just suffered so many injuries. He's so tough and strong and keeps coming back from each one. Uh, this time again, he's been out a couple weeks. Just came back in a couple weeks ago, and now just trying to keep up the pace and get it done right now in the fourth spot, looking to go directly in that main event. And you can just see the difference in speed between some of these riders going through that whoop section and James Stewart, for example. Well, the last two laps, Ricky's thrown down a 51. James has thrown down a 51. The pace of Michael Byrne, Heath Foss, they're running currently 54. It's three seconds off what these leaders are running. And three seconds a lap, that's an eternity when he comes to a main event. There he is, James Stewart. Unbelievable speed. Heading towards that whoop section once again. Is he set in the statement? Getting ready for the main? James Stewart leading here at Daytona. Daytona, James Stewart continues to lead. Heat number one for the Supercross Series. Ricky Carmichael, Michael Byrne, he fought all chasing. Ricky seems to have found that speed that he was missing that first lap. I mean, it was one just mistake in that first lap. He made a couple mistakes, and look at James just wheeling across the tops of the whoops, kind of Travis Pastrana style right there. But right now, Ricky is throwing down a, a 51 flat. James is a 50.8. These guys' lap times are very comparable, so Ricky has found that speed that we were afraid maybe he was not going to find. David Villeman, who had the final transfer, or actually was one spot out of a transfer spot in fifth, is out. He's crashed the 12. He's back on trying to get it started, but he's going to be looking at a trip to the semis here tonight. And you can see Carmichael has definitely closed it up, Denny. He's right behind him, back in the frame again. It was up to a little over three seconds. It's now down to just a little over two seconds. So. We watch James Stewart, He's, he hugs the right side of the track. If you're on his line, he's hugging right along the bail. It just blitzes right across the tops of him as though they're not even there. He was doing it in practice. He's continuing here in this heat race. And look at these guys. He's just placing, basically laying down some of the fast lap times you've seen all day. But Ricky Carmichael has picked up his pace and now is right behind James. Watch this now in slow motion as James Stewart hits those whoops. Basically, like I said, you touch the top and the rear across each whoop. He's hit, and then you do it James Stewart style. You just pick up the front wheel and wheelie across the last five, and he's feeling confident. When you start doing stuff like that, a little out of the ordinary, you're feeling good with the motorcycle. And James right now throwing out some fast lap times. And Ricky Carmichael still just a few seconds back. White flag is out. One lap to go for James Stewart. Denny, have you ever seen a rider more naturally gifted than James Stewart? We hear that standard about quite a bit. Do you agree with that statement, or has he taken the game to another level? Well, he's taken the game to a new level, I, I think, definitely. His, his skill on a motorcycle and his comfort level of letting it hang out is, is pretty much unprecedented, but he still makes some of those mental errors, and he cannot make mental errors if you're going to be a champion against Ricky Carmichael. Ricky, he has an ungodly talent as well and, and, and work ethic, but he doesn't make the mistakes that James does, and that's why right now Ricky's up 16 points on James in this points championship. And, you know, to limit, to, for James to be a champion up against Ricky, he's gonna have to eliminate some of those mistakes. And falling down the first turn four times is one of some of those mistakes he needs to eliminate. Checker flag this time for James Stewart. He takes the win in heat number one. Carmichael will take second. He's gonna transfer. We're watching Heath Voss on the Yamaha. He should be the final transfer position. Michael Byrne, James Stewart's teammate, will take third.
and he will go on straight to the main event as well. It looks like the 32 of Ryan Clark will be one spot short of a direct transfer. There's Bird across the line, and here comes Heath Voss. In an eight-lap heat race, Ralph, Michael Byrne, and Heath Foss finished 28 and 37 seconds back, respectively. It shows how fast those guys are going. Krista? Down here with James Stewart. It took him a little longer to get down here because he was doing some parade laps for the fans. James Stewart, of course, a Florida native. He lives just about an hour and a half from the Daytona track. I know you were having fun out there with the fans, but let's talk serious business. How good are you going to be in the main, and is that a sign of things to come? Uh, you know, I hope so. You know, uh, lappers, you know, I got, kind of got screwed up with lappers, but, you know, I feel good, just a little tight. and. Uh, Feels good to get out here and then race with this track so dark you can barely see out here, so uh, should be for inches in Maine. And I know you love the whoops. Are those the way you like them? Yeah, <laughs> they're big and uh, they're tough, you know, especially with the lappers. You know, you got to get a good line going through them and uh, we'll see what happens. That's his favorite part of the track. We'll see if that's where he makes up ground tonight. That it is, Christy. He's been begging for those whoops to get bigger, 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 bigger. He, he loves the technical challenge and that's what the whoops can be. And James Stewart separated himself quickly from everybody else through there. Ricky Carmichael did his best to catch in and catch up to him and ran some pretty good lap times, only about a tenth or so off of what we saw from James Stewart at the end of the race. Fern and Voss also getting transfer spots tonight. Watch it, James Stewart on the far right section. He's just blitzing across the tops. He's whoops, he lifts up the front end and just wheelies across the last five. Like I said earlier, that's confidence. He feels good on the motorcycle. He talked about it in his interview with Krista. He loves the whoops. They're big, they're challenging, and we're seeing it right now tonight in Daytona. We're set up for a huge battle in this main event, Ralph. Ricky dropped his lap times. They're comparable to James Stewart. If these two riders can get out side by side like we saw in this heat race, we're gonna see a 20 lap battle. Of course, the thing we got to talk about before he can get to the whoops, he's got to get out of the gate. It's been a problem for him in the mains last few weeks. It was no problem in the heat race. I'm sure he'll be thinking about it. Stay with us. We got another heat coming your way. Out of each Florida, the Daytona Supercross by Honda is underway, getting set for heat number two for the Supercross class. But before we can drop the gate there, here's Chris Devota. Guys, down here on the track, you've been talking about how the setup is so different on the bike because the track is so different. Look at this down here. This is the outdoor part of it. You kind of see the gnarly grass and the kind of the bumps. This grass is going to get eaten up by the end of the night. So this is kind of the outdoor section. And then as we walk back here a little bit, you see the dirt actually change colors from kind of this black gray up to the brown. That's the clay part that the guys are used to in the indoor. That's the integrity that holds together. That's what the guys make the jumps out of. That's why the jumps are so much like an indoor track. And then this dirt and grass is like an outdoor track. And one of the things you have to do, Denny, is find a balance with your suspension. You got to get soft enough to be able to get through the whoops and the roughs and all that, but you got to be able to absorb these big jumps that they have. As we take a look at our Dunlop start list here, we'll find out just how sore Chad Reed is. Ivan Tedesco could be a good opportunity for the factory Suzuki rider to sneak a heat win. And don't forget about the number 199. First time we've seen. Oh, high flying Travis Pastrana all year in a Supercross machine. Well, if Travis Pastrana is at an event, you're going to be looking for some excitement. We saw some huge excitement from today. He threw down a backflip uh, attempt on, a, on his last lap of his preliminary qualifying. Uh, he's guaranteed to show some excitement. He came back here a couple years ago, won his heat race, beat Kevin Windham. So if Travis Pastrana is on the line, expect big things and a lot of excitement. And guess who's got our onboard? Travis. Travis. Yeah. <laughs> there so. it is. There's a good look at how far you've got to go to get to turn number one. One thing I can guarantee you about Travis Pastrana, he'll be all throttle. Here we go. Reed stuck in the middle. Comes out about fourth and then gets hung up behind another rider and Pastrana goes right to the front and keeps kick wide. Travis Pastrana gets around Ivan Tedesco for the lead. Wheeling all the way through the woods. Here on board and in the lead. Can you hear the crowd right now? It's this glory in their approval. Travis Pastrana always a crowd favorite. Obviously after his, his crazy headaches in his preliminary qualifying, just takes the lead from Ivan Tedesco. Travis has had such a busy week. He rode the GMCC race, uh, cross country race on Tuesday, rode the dirt track on Wednesday. And now we see him out here at the Supercross out front battling with Ivan Tedesco. 
And Denny, no small feat because Ivan Tedesco, one of the best supercross racers in the world, and Chad Reed has pulled off. Uh, you gotta believe that Chad had just realized the pain is just too much. Uh, he maybe made a mistake, got caught up with some other guys. Maybe he's gonna try the semifinal, but right now, the, pen, the championship hopes of that number 22 Yamaha are slowly dwindling away. Look at the battle between Tedesco and Pistrana as they blow by the man that is watching the points lead slip out of his hands, Chad Reed. While these two put on a tremendous show here under the lights in Daytona. You can hear Pastrana working the throttle. Perfect example of just how gnarly this, this Daytona truck is. Look at the ruts on the face of the jumps. All the variety of different lines that him and Ivan Tedesco are taking. Just these two riders alone going wide. You can see there's an option on the inside with the deep ruts. Great visual what these guys have to deal with on this demanding Daytona track. We heard James Stewart talk about the lights here. He said it was a little bit dark. Does it look that way to you? Well, it doesn't right now. I mean, this looks like a pretty good point of view. That Travis was trying to blitz across the outside line. Very similar to what we saw in the lights class with Mills, Samson, Grant. Travis taking that same line that, that James was. And it seems to be a much faster line as he pulls up and almost makes the pass on Tedesco. Denny, he seems to be the only rider that can run the same pace through the whoops that James Stewart ran earlier. Well, Travis is known to be able to just hang off that motorcycle and give it a handful of throw. He's a big, strong kid. He's He's almost 200 pounds right now. He's so tall, he's strong and lanky. But the amazing thing is Travis has spent most of his last few weeks and months doing everything but racing. He's out doing his freestyle. He's racing his rally car. He's doing everything, having fun riding a motorcycle. And this guy is just so talented out here at the Daytona track, racing with Ivan Tedesco, who is no doubt, unquestionably one of the best Supercross riders in the world. And he is keeping pace with him right now in this heat race number two. By the way, Travis Preston holds down third, and Tim Ferry's got fourth. That's the final transfer spot. Top four going. Mike Brown is one spot out of it in fifth, and here comes Travis. Travis knows each lap. He's got a much better line than Ivan Tedesco hugging the, tent, the tough blocks way to the right. It's, the track's a little lower, and look at this line, Brian. They have done such a great job with this track this weekend. So many different lines, so many different ways to take these sections. Each lap, Travis knows he's the fastest guy in the whoops. He just can't get close enough to make the pass. Tedesco changing up his line. The lap before, he went to the inside there, noticing it a little bit faster to jump far in that corner and run a little bit deeper. This is the finish line right area where Travis attempted his backflip in his preliminary qualifying. Just a madman, but out have fun, having fun, a crowd favorite. We heard them just screaming earlier. Well, we knew he'd be excited, and he's given us a ride in second place. Can he get the win? Stay with us to find out. He's on to a slim lead over the maniac, and I've got to tell you, that's the only way you can put it. Travis Brest, or Travis Pastrana, because Denny, he is all throttle. All throttle, and you got to believe, he might be getting a little arm pump right now. Travis out here on one of the most demanding Supercross tracks ever, and he is just giving it his all right now, hanging off the back of the motorcycle. It, it, it's actually, he's closed up the gap. Travis Preston's right there in third on that number 11 Honda. Kind of caught these guys a little bit, but, Oh, man, Travis now, Pastrana, now, how excited. Watch it right here. We're talking about Maniac, and here's why. They Look at this. Grabs a handful of throttle, jumps into the ruts, and just when you think he's kind of good, I think he clips a bit of a false neutral, almost goes over the bars. He seat bounces the double all the while. Ivan is going, look out. Let me get by this guy and get out front. And look, at he doesn't lose hardly any ground. No, and he's right back in. He's settled in. He's relaxed. I think he's kind of regained his composure and right once again all over the back of Ivan Tedesco. Travis Pastrana on a limited schedule. Spectacular. Thank you for coming. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think we can underline this enough to give you an idea of just how fast he's riding. Remember, Ivan Tedesco is one of the only riders all season who's been able to run with Stewart and, and uh, Carmichael and Chad Reed. And, and you, Travis Pastrana's running right with him. We right saw it two him. years ago, did the same thing. He beat Kevin Windham to take it. Here comes the whoop section. You see down the right side, Trav oh, oh, Travis, oh, just gets punished by the motorcycle. Travis just giving it his all, getting up a little woozy, just dropped the front end. He knew that it was all or nothing, uh, and he just went for it, trying to make the pass in Tedesco, and down Pastrana goes. An unbelievable ride by 
Travis Pastrana and a direct transfer to the main event goes right out the window. Oh. You just, to be inside Travis's mind has got to be, I can't imagine. I mean, he's one of the most exciting people I, I've ever even encountered in my entire life, and the guy just gives it his all. He's a crowd favorite. You hear him scream right now as he's getting off, walking off the track, and the poor guy just needs to sometimes back it down a notch, put in that main event in 20 laps, but, you know, a big crash for Travis. The guys in the Astros medical crew checking him out, seeing if he's okay. Ivan Tedesco, meantime, on his way to a win. A lot of pressure suddenly off of him. You can see his pace has slowed down a little bit. He's regained his composure, and he's just going to happy to get through this heat race and put him in that 20-lap main event. A couple more obstacles in the way of Ivan Tedesco and a win. There it is. Heat number two, the Supercross class goes to Ivan Tedesco. Travis Preston will get second. Total disappointment for Travis Pastrana. Tim Ferry's going on to the main as well as is Nick Way. Krista? Down here with our winner, Ivan Tedesco, and what a battle. First you have the points leader, Chad Reed, go off the track, and then you've got that great racing between Ivan Tedesco and Travis Pastrana. <laughs> Ivan, walk us through what happened out there. Man, you know, I got a good start. Travis kind of hairballed it in the first corner like he always does, but we had a good time battling with him. He was faster than me in the whoops. I was faster around the rest of the track. I think that's where he ended up going down, trying to take some chances, but hey, he's still fast, man. Ivan, let me ask you too, with Chad off tonight, is this where you can make up ground in the points? We've talked so much about Ricky and James, but what about you? Yeah, I hope so. I'm sitting fourth right now, and uh, Chad's leading it. I, I guess he's got an injury or something, but uh, he's a ways ahead of me, but we'll see. All right, Ivan Tedesco, our heat winner. Of course, Chad Reed su suffering from that separated shoulder. Well, it is a great opportunity for Ivan Tedesco, who's podiumed already this year, to really score a bunch of points. And there's Travis Pastrana favoring that right arm, it looks like, Denny. Yeah, he seems to be favoring it, very similar to what we saw Chad opening tonight. It just shows how intense this sport is. The track is so tough here at Daytona, and a, a, a big mistake for Travis, and down he goes. Here's a look at the results, the top four that are going. Talked about privateer Nick Way. He's on his way as well. He's been very fast lately. Michael Brown will go on to a semi. Let's go back now and show you what happened Travis Pastrana, slow motion first. Well, as I mentioned with James Stewart, you know, the big key to these whoops is getting in with a lot of momentum. And Travis was doing just that. He comes in, he does his double jump. He's gonna come in, he's gonna lift the front end up. He's far on this right side. I think they're a little bit worn down. And he's starting to blitz across the top, but he misses one just right there, drops the front end and gets over the front of the motorcycle. He's such a big rider. When his weight transfers, it so accelerates so much more. The gravitation, the, the leverage, and man, he goes down that 199 Suzuki basically just punishes him. That's what it looks like at real speed from the helmet cam. That was incredible video. And there's Pastrana walking back. And Denny, I think it wasn't the crash landing that got him with his shoulder so much as a motorcycle chasing him back down. Will we see him back for a semi? Oh, I hope so. What a show. That is Pastrana. Happy to have him here. Let's talk briefly about uh, this Pastrana thing, first of all. I mean, we talked about him earlier, now we talked to him. I find myself wishing the kid would focus on one thing, and then in the same breath, I think, I'm just so glad he does all this stuff. But this thing he just did, I mean, A, he's running as fast as the leaders, and then he does what Travis does. Well, Tra Travis is one of those guys that gives 100%, but you gotta, you gotta be 100% all the time. In Supercross, you can't part-time it. You know, yeah. Jeremy McGrath, when he does, they call him part-time, he does the first six races, then he's out. He doesn't do one sparingly. For Travis to come in here, be riding, GNCC, flat track, and then now Supercross. He's got the speed, he's got the talent, but you make one small mistake at that level and you go down and that's what you saw what happened. And to make that, but to make that effort, I mean, that's just pure Pastrana. Uh, I mean, here you see the tail end and he took a lick. I mean, he I don't know about seeing hard him in the you watch, you watch him here, you know, when he comes down into these whoops, he's blitz and blitz and makes one small mistake and then down, face goes and the bike pounds him. When he gets up, you can see he's a little bit dizzy and you know, he's been knocked out quite a few times and so you don't want many hits to the head. You're going to put any uh, money on whether he'll be back for the semi? 
I think he'll be back. You know, I mean, he's he'll, he'll either fake the guys into thinking he's okay or he is okay. You know, Travis is a tough kid. I, I, I mean, his, his father Robert. I mean, he, he's a Marine. He's, they're just a tough family. They take a good beating. He will go for it. I'm going to show you another piece of tape now that uh, falls into the category of something I thought I would never see, and we're going to make a little bit of a quiz out of it, if you will. It's going to be a little bit of a mystery as we, uh, well, again, I'm not going to give away too much of the story. Let's just roll the tape, and I think you'll figure it out quickly enough. You may not recognize this rider. Let me help you out. 1984 winner of the Daytona Supercross. Won that race as defending AMA Supercross champion. Went on to claim three AMA Motocross crowns and the Motocross the Nations five times. You statistic freaks have probably figured out that is the career record of David Bailey whose career ended with a paralyzing crash in January 1987 at the peak of his career. Bailey had not ridden the motorcycle in almost 20 years until a friend named Ricky James, who was also injured a year ago, extended an invitation. Hey, David, let's go riding. Once you ride, you, you have this desire to do a little bit more, a little bit more, and, and uh, after 20 years of not riding, it came back in about 30 seconds. Why? In my blood, I guess, you know, just watching all these races, going to all the supercrosses. I wanna I wanna keep doing it, you know. And David used to train me a little bit in amateur motocross, so you know, he helped me out a lot and got me to where I went went in the three years that I did race motocross. I'm starting to get used to it and uh, you know, Ricky did a great job and our friend Brad over in Sun City just said, Hey, wait till you see this thing, he sent me some pictures of it and so we're kinda protected if we fall and but I don't really wanna test it, I'd rather have Ricky do that. Brad is from Parapros Racing, and he, uh, he's in a wheelchair. He got hurt about seven years ago at motocross. Um, so I came to him, and he's in my situation, so he knows exactly what I need. Recluse got me an automatic clutch and this hand back brake, and we welded some Nerf bars on it. Just to, so if I fall over, it won't hurt our legs, because we don't know if we broke them or not. So that keeps us safe. And the saddle seat, it's a base of a shifter cart seat. It's cut and uh, padded and it keeps us from sliding off. As soon as I got hurt, I said I wanted to ride my bike again and see where it takes me. I don't want to take it too far and get hurt more, but I want to still have fun, that's for sure. The feeling is great. I, you know, I, I feel like if I could put my foot out, I could go just as fast as I used to. You know, it, it's, uh, it's not as awkward as I thought it would be. You know, I ride a four-wheeler a lot, and so I, but I'm pretty stabilized up there, and I wasn't sure how the balance would be. And a couple people hold me as I took off, and as soon as I went five feet, I could tell that it's it's just like it was and probably get faster. I, I have a feeling this is Ricky's. I don't want to wear his bike out, so Honda, I'll be calling. So much fun to remember the great rivalry between you and Bailey. Let me talk about the rivalry that now exists for the rest of this Supercross season. Reed's in tough shape. For yeah. him to pull it out from here is a small miracle and that leaves Bubba, who it seems to me has a little Travis Pastrana in him, and Ricky who is absolutely the consummate professional. How's this thing going to play out to the end of the year? What do they eat? What does each of them have to do to win the championship? Well, you need a miracle for Chad. Unfortunately, you hate to see it. We had a three-man battle going this far. Uh, the rumor is that he had separated his shoulder this week training. I don't know the details of it, but he did pull He did pull out on the second practice. He did go down in a first-turn crash, which wasn't that big of a deal, but he did pull out. Rumor is that he's going to be back for a semi. We'll, we'll see what happens there. But he needs to be healthy. To be healthy, that's going to take a miracle. we got a race next week in Orlando as well. James Stewart showed the maturity in Canada, beat Ricky straight up. But Ricky's, like you say, the consummate professional. That guy works diligently week after week. What people don't understand is if he, if he falls on a left-hand turn, he'll spend a day doing left-hand turns. You know, I mean, he's back to the basics, and he works hard, hard all the time. And he's not going to sit down and get beat. And when it comes to fitness here at Daytona, he's going to run the, the last lap as hard as he runs the first lap. So you have to have everything going, which James Stewart has the talent, but I don't know if he's got the heart and the desire and also the physical conditioning that Ricky Carmichael has. So you got the Wonder Boy and the veteran. Great battle. To the end, from here, 
Do you think James is ready to, to, to step up, or does he still have a – he, he need the rest of this season to get ready to beat Ricky next year? He needs a mistake from Ricky, and I don't know if Ricky's going to make that mistake. And that's, that's a bad place to be. You don't want to be where you have to wait for somebody to screw up. Ricky Johnson, always a pleasure. I know My you got pleasure. work to do. Thanks for coming in and joining us. How about you guys up in the booth, uh, Ralph and Danny? Any opinion on that? You've watched the first half of this season. What's going to happen from here out? Well, Dave, I think the key is what Rick Johnson said, and that is that he's going to, James Stewart is going to need RC to make a mistake, Denny, and he's not known as a guy that does that, and he will hound you and wear you down throughout from here to the end of the year. Uh, Ricky said that in Canada. You know, everyone said, you know, look at James, he's beating you, and Ricky said, you know what? I'm in it for the long run, and we're seeing that with Ricky Carmichael right now. He's got a good point lead on James Stewart, and like I said, Ricky's going to have to make a mistake for James to make up those points, and with Chad Reed out, there's that spacer, that buffer that helps make up those two extra points. Instead of just the first to the second or first to third, these guys are going to run first two all season long, and it's going to take James pretty much winning here on out to get that title. Of course, Ricky wants to win the race here in Daytona in front of this massive crowd, but he told me earlier today what I want the most tonight is to leave Daytona with the points lead. Can he do it? He might do that and get the win. Stay with us to find out. Start of last year's Supercross Lights main event, wild action in the early going. Potential winner of the race, Grant Langston on the Kawasaki on the ground. Another potential winner, Davey Millsap, out of the event after a collision with Troy Adams. Who's that lead? A couple kids named Josh, and they collide. Josh Grant and Josh Hansen battling for the lead. Both end up on the ground. Hansen is able to pick his up and get going more quickly and as a result wins what may have been the wildest Supercross Lights main event of the year. Josh Hansen takes the checkered flag at Daytona. I hope it'll be that crazy tonight. And now let's offer a congratulations as this big crowd awaits the main events here this evening to Jeff Stanton who made history here between 1989 and 1992 as the first to win four in a row at Daytona. What a tough guy. He is now part of the Daytona Legends display. Each big race down here, they induct one of the series' great heroes, and Jeff Stanton is certainly that. Congratulations, Jeff. Let's go topside to Denny and Ralph. All right, Dave, thank you very much. And spoke with Jeff Stanton earlier today. He is here, excited about watching tonight's great action, which begins with the Supercross Lights main event. Here's our Dunlop start list. We've talked a lot about Davey Millsaps and Josh Grant and Chris Gossler. They're all in this as well. Josh Hansen, who won this race last year, Denny, he's in here as well. Josh Hansen, we haven't really spoke about him too much tonight. He's beat up, his back is, uh, it's getting better each week. But the, right now, the biggest story is the 300 riders. Josh Grant, Davey Millsaps, and Thomas Hahn. These guys did work on everybody else in their heat races. Looking to do the same here in this main event. Tucker Hibbert spends a lot of time snow crossing. I do a little super crossing. Brandon Jessman in here as well on the 121 as we work our way through tonight's Dunlop start list for the Supercross Lights main event just moments away. Denny, let's talk about tonight's racetrack. Well, Daytona, it, it's one of the, uh, it's so unique. It's awesome. I love coming to Daytona. The whoop section right there, you see how intense that is. We've seen it all night long. Davey Millsaps has just rocked it. He's going so fast. That's where he's making up all his ground. We saw it in the, in the Supercross class as well. This section right here, an on-off section. Josh Grant was choosing to jump over him. Davey Millsaps is choosing to go across the tops of him. I think the tops is a much faster line, and that's where Millsaps is going to make up some more time if he can do it here in this main event. That's a look at our Kawasaki track map. Here's Chris Devota. I'm so glad Denny mentioned the whoops. These things are treacherous, but it's not just the height that I want to talk about. It's the width, the distance between these things. Now, I wasn't the best long jumper, but I'm going to give it an attempt. If I'm starting on top of one, I'm down in the bottom here. Now we're talking the depth. It's height, it's width, it's depth. It's kind of a triple-headed monster. Speaking of triples, what about valleys, canyons, gullies? That's what these things actually look like more than anything. And hey, what about the ruts? These things are already rutted out. We saw the guys doing their parade laps. They're taking a good look at these things. These things are going to be very hairy this evening. That they will, Krista. Thank you for that progressive direct pit report as we get set for tonight's main event and one of the things I got out of that conversation with Stanton earlier today Denny was how this racetrack will change every corner 
every lap because of that racing surface. And that's going to take the rider who is able to adapt as the track changes. You have to adapt your lines, your riding style, and everything else. And that's going to be the guy who's going to win tonight who can adapt with the track. And the great thing about those whips is they can dig down into them. They can make them deep and treacherous. And that's going to be a big key. The guy who can get through that, avoiding those tough blocks, avoiding those big ruts, can be the guys to get the win tonight. Matt Walker's got the onboard camera for us. It's mounted to his helmet. You're looking right off his visor. You can see the ruts on the grass in front of him. How do they deal with that, Denny? Just getting out of the gate. Well, something here, because you can't mess with out in front of the gate. So sometimes you're getting some big ruts. You see him right there, just to your left, your screen right there. The ruts that come out exiting the gate. You can't mess with that. You can't go out there and pack your line, stuff like that. So a big key is looking for a good line, a good rut that's straight and not too deep. And the guy who picks a good line is going to get the whole shot. Here we go. Couple of riders flying right through the first corner, but it looked like maybe Chris Gosseler got the whole shot, Denny, on the 102 of the Kawasaki. That was this young Zach Osborne that came in. We saw him blasting off the side of the track in the first turn. He's going to have to regroup 22nd. And Millsaps comes flying through the whoop section and takes the lead. This is the earliest we've seen Davey Millsaps out front all season long. Got out front good, got a good start, like Chris mentioned earlier. Out front now, now he's gonna lay down some fast lap times and break away from this field. That's gonna be the hardest thing for the field for the fact now that Millsaps gets away quick. Normally, he's gotta spend quite a few laps working his way up through the field. Tonight, Denny, half a lap in, he's got the lead. Yeah, last thing, but he's got Josh Grant right there in second. We saw it last week, and Josh Grant was not giving up on Millsaps. Millsaps made a pass on Grant. Grant made the pass back and took off. Kind of just beat down David Millsaps. It's be interesting to see if Josh Grant can turn the tables now on David. Let's take you back to the start of this one as the gate dropped and everybody went storming into turn one. A long first turn. You can see Zach Osborne gets punted off the side of the track. Down he goes. The rookie in his first Supercross is going to have to regain this main event in 22nd and dead last. Here's another look at it from another angle. You see the Kawasaki right there. Chris Gosser, such a long start straight, comes flying in. And that's one of the tribulations or problems of going down. You're going to have to start last. And here's Chad Johnson at Yamaha as well. Here it is at real speed on board with Matt Walker. Hang on. Boy, there is hardly any room. Millsaps continues to lead. Josh Grant in second. Jessamine is third. Gossler is fourth. And Johnson gives chase in the final spot in the top five. We talked about how Honda hasn't won here in quite a few years. And Millsaps on to a way to a good start at picking that up. The last time they won here in the last class back 1993. Here's that sex I talked about earlier. Millsaps doing on and off. Grant has changed up his line as well, doing very similar lines. And it's good to see, look at number 121 up there in third, Brandon Jessamine, Chris Gossler. These are the four guys we've seen up front most of this season. Getting it done right now at Daytona. Jessamine, a great story as well, coming through the former champion, goes to race at Arena Cross, gets another chance with that Moto World Yamaha, or I'm sorry, Yamaha Troy. And he's in third with that Chris Goose Gosler right there in fourth. And that's a fight for third. They put in another lap and get underway for one more trip here at Daytona. Stay with us. Matt Walker will have more great shots like this when we return to Daytona. Welcome back to Daytona, the World Center of Racing. Tonight is the Daytona Supercross by Honda. And Davey Millsaps, the series points leader out front here in the Supercross Lights class. 15 times, Denny, the winner of the Daytona Supercross Lights class is going on to win the Eastern title. Well, like Ricky Carmichael said in the Supercross class, the Daytona is where the stage is set for the rest of the season, whether it be in the lights or the Supercross. Daytona is a huge event, and right now Josh Grant still keeping it within two seconds, keeping Davey Millsaps in his sights. Two riders getting it done in completely different styles, I think. Davey's a big rider. He, does, he trains in Georgia. Josh Grant, a little bit smaller, compact rider, getting it done out in California, coming down here to Daytona race the East Coast Light Series. 
Right now, though, Millsap's giving the best to Josh. Josh has been working really hard with Ryan Hughes, and I think it's really helped Josh's program. He looks like he's a much stronger, confident rider. You can see the gap they've got over this fight for third between Jessman and Gosseler. Millsaps, his best lap of 53-4, Grant of 53-7, not a whole lot of difference there, but when you get back to third, Jessman's about two seconds slower. He's a little bit off the pace, but right now he's on the box. He's in third, Chris Gossler right there in fourth. Two riders, we've talked enough about great stories who did not give up on their careers, kept working hard, and found people to believe in them. Yamaha Troy for Brandon Jessamine, the Monster Pro Cigarette team for Chris Gossler, and both these riders have delivered for their sponsors, and that just shows the heart and desire of a motocross supercrosser that you never give up on yourself to you keep working hard, and you never know, you get another opportunity like these guys have, and they've delivered. You're seeing how difficult that whoop section is. The two different styles. Daniel Millsap's able to just blitz right across the tops of them, and that's where they're making, he's obviously Millsap's picking up the time. I think Grant as well. These guys running a little bit different pace, similar to what we see in the Supercross class compared to maybe, you know, Ricky and James compared to uh, Ivan and Nick Way. It's a great shot there. You can see all the lights around this facility that are turned on bright here tonight. Musco doing a tremendous job of lighting up the tri-oval here at Daytona International Speedway so that we could bring Supercross under the lights here at Daytona. The third year that they've done that, and it has just changed this event tremendously and really made it into one of the biggest spectacles of Bike Week. One thing about this Daytona track we talked about in Supercross at the other stadiums, the pace has picked up so much quicker, I think, than what it's used to be. These guys are racing through the corners. They're, they're, they're blitzing the whips. There's no time to rest. And, oh, Josh Hansen. Last year's winner. The, pulling off the track. Not sure what is the problem. Maybe his back's bothering him, what the deal is. But back about the track. Daytona here is different, though. The track, the best thing for these guys, you go slow to go fast. You go avoid the ruts. You avoid these bumps. You change up your lines. Look at right now. Gossler chose the inside. Jessman the outside. The guy who's going to pick the best lines, the smoothest lines, it takes the most patience, is going to be the guy who comes out on top. Gossler coming right at him on the Kawasaki, number 102. A tremendous fight, building for third. We'll stay with it when we come back to Daytona as they chase Davey Millsaps. Millsaps in the number 118 out of Georgia, the Honda rider. Leading here at the Daytona Supercross by Honda in the Supercross Light Series. So much speculation about where this young rider's career is headed. He's told us he's going to get on a 450 and ride the big Supercross class later in the year when it heads back to the West Coast. And then, Denny, I guess he's planning on staying on the 450 for the outdoor series. Millsaps is the next generation of guys. So many riders have kind of found themselves lost and stuck in the lights class, not really moving up to the premier Supercross class. Davey Millsaps, on the other hand, he's been working hard. He's the next generation of guys. He's making things happen, and I see him doing big things in that 450 the Supercross class here very soon. Matt Walker went off course. Back on. Well, you really hear Matt using that throttle, get through that whoop section. Back to Millsaps. Out in front, Grant still holds down second. Jessman and Gossler still battling it out over third. Gossler back almost four seconds. Losing time, lost touch of Millsaps, now just racing his own race, gonna try and put, finish out this race strong. He's got six laps remaining, and try and finish out this race on the box, and stay in contention, and you never know what can happen. You know, if you gotta put in solid laps, solid results each weekend, you never know, Millsaps might have a problem, and he's gotta be there to capitalize. Josh Grant is actually matched, or, well, he's actually beaten the best time laid down by Millsaps by one, hundredth of a second. It shows what Josh is capable of. He's, ab he's able to go fast and just be able to do it every single lap. We saw him do it really well last weekend. This weekend, Millsap seems to have a little bit better, a little bit more consistency. He's fast every lap where Josh shows flashes of brilliance, but still, he's in second, right ahead of these two riders who have been battling from the very beginning each and every lap. And that says a lot, too, of these guys' endurance. They're mental state that these guys right now, Brendan Jessman knows, if I make a mistake, I'm gonna get past. He has no room for error. Goss on the hand, same thing. If I make a mistake, I could lose touch of Brandon Jessman and lose all shot of trying to get on the box. Denny, as we watch this fight continue, you're a former Supercross Lights winner here at Daytona. You get to the stage now. Four laps left in this. 
You've been working harder than you normally would. I would take it at a regular Supercross event. How do you dig down deep now to find that extra bit of strength that you need as we continue to watch what is arguably the best battle on the racetrack right now? I think it's like these riders are doing. They're staying focused. They're hitting their lines each and every lap. I think by this point, you've kind of got to feel where the track's changing, where the lines have developed, and you've got to hit that line each and every lap. Focus on where you're at. Don't make a mistake and just get it to the finish. And with these guys, you know, with being somebody so close to that, that makes it even a little bit more of the pressure's on when you got someone you can hear that bike just like you see right now. Here comes Gossler right by in the whoops. More throttle, he takes the lead. And Jessamine drops back to fourth position. Chris Gossler having a spectacular season after early on not even thinking he had a ride are clicking off here at the Daytona Supercross by Honda and Davey Millsaps looking to give Honda their first Supercross lights win since 1993. Just four to go. Look at Davey just muscling that motorcycle, just lifting it basically from tabletop to tabletop. You know, the days of my good friend Doughboy David Pingree, who would eat just ho-hos and ding-dongs each week. I mean, you got to work hard to win. And, Davey Millsaps has obviously been working very hard. Millsaps clicking off the laps here. Looking so strong. Denny, it's gonna be tough to beat him in this championship chase. He's confident, he knows, he feels he's the best guy on the track. And he's getting it done. Week in, week out, this will be his third win in four tries. He's the dominant points leader. He just wants to carry this into that, uh, that outdoor championship here coming up in a few weeks, a few months. And then when he gets on that big 450, as we take a look at Daytona Supercross lights, wins by manufacturers. Millsap's on his way to getting Honda another one. We'll put them into a tie with the Yamaha. The best thing you can do as a rider is evolve and mature each and every year. And I think we've seen, we talked about James Stewart constantly doing it, constantly evolving. New rider, Davey Millsap, this is a new guy. This is a new rider that in the past has maybe kind of made some mental errors right now looking very strong. And look at the battle for third heating up. Jessamine has charged back on Gossler, but then he went a little bit wide in that corner, Denny. Yeah, now he's turned the tables on him. And uh, Gossard's going to, or Jessamine's going to try and force Gossard into a mistake. And here comes Tommy Hahn and that Sobe Samsung Honda. This is going to be a three rider battle for that final podium spot. And Hahn came all the way up from about 10th early on. And now he's right in the thick of this fight. This is going to be a tremendous battle to the end. Hahn's running almost a second lap fast and sees two riders. He's caught up to them. The problem is Goose and Gossler and Jessamine have kind of slipped into a pace. They feel comfortable where each other are at. Hahn, on the other hand, he's got the charge coming right now. But catching up and passing are two different things. And Han's been very good through the whoops. Let's see how much time he makes up here. White flag is out at the finish line. Can he catch him? Han in the red riding gear. Tracking down Jessamine in the blue gear. He's trying to catch Gosler in the green. Oh, Jessamine goes off. There goes Han. He's up into fourth. There's that consistency I talked about, trying having to hit the same line consistent every lap. Right there, Jessamine caught a group, shot off to the side of the track. And Tommy Han moves up into fourth. Han has not won this race since 93, and they would like nothing more than to sweep it. Top three across the boards. That would be a dream come true for the Red Rider team. Millsaps making his way to the finish. Checkered flag for Davey Millsaps. He takes the win, giving Honda that victory, the first since 1993. There's the battle we're watching for third. Now, Honda in the red gear struggling to catch Gossler. He got around Jessamine, but he's losing ground, Denny. Gossler seemed to pick up the pace. Once Jessamine wasn't all over him, he was able to go back to his normal lines, drop into a good pace for this final lap. He opened up the gap on Thomas Hahn, and Chris Gossler is going to take his podium here, here at Daytona. Well, Honda will get the top two spots as Josh Grant takes second. Gossler will put Kawasaki up on the podium as well with a fine third-place effort. Hahn will take fourth, Jessamine, Fifth, Krista is down with our winner.
A very tired and exhausted Davey Millsaps. He just raced his heart. Oh, he just yelled at me. He's not tired. See, I was trying to give you a break, Davey. We're going to scoot in here, too, as talking to his mechanic, Carlos Rivera. You know, remember, he's been sick. He's had a little bit of a sinus infection, has had trouble breathing this week. But he just won that race in dominating fashion, nearly lapping the field. I was basically just giving you time to stall, to put your hat on and get, get set. We know you're not tired. Tell us about your race. Well, you know what? Uh, it went good. I thought I had the whole shot back down a little early. That way I can make it on the inside. And, uh, you know, I didn't come out first, but I came out, you know, top three, something like that. And, uh, you know, uh, got in the lead the first lap and just I rode my race from there. And I know last year was not the race you wanted at Daytona. You know, you crashed, finished 18th. Was this a little bit of redemption? Had you been circling this race on your calendar to get on the podium and win here tonight? Oh, well, you know, I wanted to win this race so bad since the first time I uh, got here in 04. And, you know, last year this is my first uh, heat race win. And this year was the first heat race win, too. And I was kind of nervous because last year I got taken out here when I had to run the heat race. So I was like, oh, no, you got to be kidding me right now. But, you know, I just want to um, thank American Honda, you know, for putting this race on. It's, you know, it was, it was good this year, and uh, my mechanic calls my mom, and I just want to, uh, I just want to uh, wish the best for Ernesto Fonseca right now. You know, uh, he's a friend of mine, and I just, uh, I just hope he gets better. And a Honda teammate, and you know, in the points picture here in the lights, you know, we talked to you earlier and said, you know, you're the guy to beat. Does this mean now two in a row, the dominating win? Are you really the guy to beat in this East Lights division? Well, you know, I, uh, I don't look at it like that. I look at it as far as uh, just taking one race at a time, and you know, if, uh, if I win it, I win it. You know, I'm going here to win for sure, and. I don't know. You know it's, uh, I don't consider myself the guy that beat you. Know, I do in my, you know, I do in my heart and but I don't, I don't go around saying, you know, you, you're not going to beat me. But, uh, you know, they all rode a good race, and, you know, I just want to congratulate everyone. Well, we like messing with you, so I, I have to again. Did you just get a whole shot tonight? Is that what I saw out there? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got off the line good, and, you know, I just shut off, and Juice went by me, and, um, you know, like I said, I tried to make it on the inside to come out first, and it didn't really happen that well, but, uh, um, you know, I, I passed him in the whoops and, you know, I just got it from there. Always a lot of fun to interview and he's always a good shot to win, guys. Well, he might not think he's the guy to beat Denny, but he is. Davey Millsaps wins another one and extends his points lead over Gosler and Grant and Jessamine. And here's how they finished up the two Honda riders. Honda actually getting three in the top five with Thomas Hahn having a great ride up from about mid-pack to uh, finish fourth. Dave Millsaps, when we win three out of four race main events, you're like it. or not, you're the man to beat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the big statement is being made is a big Daytona trophy. We'll now head back up I-95 to Georgia. Davey Millsaps is from. So you look back through the rest of the field. That's Zach Osborne, number 168, and that KTM came from 22nd. He's the rider we saw flying off the track in that first turn. The young rider in his debut Supercross comes from dead last and pulls up to 14th. Good rider for that young, for that young rider. Tough run for Davalos. Yeah, Josh Martin Hansen, Davalos. 21st. A couple of riders we used to see up front, Martin and Joshua Hansen, both making mistakes. Going to have to set things straight and get ready for Orlando next weekend. Let's head back downstairs to Kristen. With our second place finisher, Josh Grant. You know, Josh, it was second last year. I know you wanted that win so bad, but I know Davey was tough to beat. Was there anything you had for him tonight? Um, the rest of the track I did, the only thing I struggled with tonight was the whoops. But, uh, you know, second's better than the DNF that I had at St. Louis, so I'm just trying to score points and get in the top three for this championship. So hopefully he just gets a bad moto, you know, coming up. We only got a couple races left. And, uh, you know, I could have done it without my uh, Samsung, or sorry, Sobe Samsung Mobile Honda. You know, they did really good for me tonight, and they set up my bike really well. And, you know, Amsoil, uh, Rockford, Fosgate, and Napster, those guys helped me out a lot, and they got me up here. So um, i just like to thank those guys. Josh, you've been a fixture on the podium week in and week out. Are you someone to beat for this championship? <laughs> I feel pretty good this year. Training with uh, Rhino, and, um, you know, it's improved a lot. But, you know, uh, Ricky came into the series last year swinging, so I wanted to do the same thing this year, and I think I'm proving, proving to myself that I can do it. And, um, you know, it's just going to take some time. He's swinging. We're going to nickname him the slugger. <laughs> well... Rhino is, of course, Ryan Hughes, and had quite a career in his own right. He was very well known for his training regimen. So let's show you what those points are like. Gosler now 25 back behind Davey Millsaps. It's basically a race. They're going to have to have something happen to Davey Millsaps for either Gosler or Grant to get back in it. And the way Davey Millsaps is right now with three out of four wins, it's not looking very good for the rest of the competition. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Of course it is. This is a tough championship, but Davey Millsaps is the man to beat. The rest of the guys, they're just chasing him. Here's Krista with a man who finished in third tonight. 
some great battles out there on the track. Chris Gossler was involved in most of them. Talk about your performance this evening. Uh, got off to a good start, and man, my my weak point all night has been those whoops. They're they're pretty big, so I just focused on trying to get through those for 15 laps, and they wore me out. So I had a hard time with Justman there, and I just knew knew I had to get back by him to keep second in points. So that was my main goal for that race. So Davy and uh, Josh were just gone. So. I got to get my hats off to them. They rode a great race. So I'm going to go home this week and work a little harder. Hopefully next week, move up a little bit. Chris Gossler, our third place finisher, and we send it back to Dave Despain. You know, one of the fun things about coming here and watching this thing for 35 years has been watching the kids come up. You know, teeny boppers like Mark Barnett, for example, who come here, make a name for themselves. I'm really looking forward to seeing Millsap go up against this Villapoto kid from the West Coast, the 16-year-old Mike Alessi. I think when you anticipate what Supercross is going to be like, when those kids get there, you assume RC will have moved on by then. Bubba may be dominating the game. Who knows? I think the future of the class looks pretty promising based on the kind of riding I see tonight out of this Millsap kid. We have the main event still to come. It's the best part of the whole thing. I also want to give you a quick reminder about the dude for the day, Supercross-style sweepstakes. You can win a Kawasaki KX450F plus a trip to Vegas and the AMA Supercross finale. To enter, you log on to SpeedTV.com and you use the weekly code word, which is Vegas. Get all the details and official rules at SpeedTV.com. Presented by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. We're going to take a commercial break and we will come back to see who's who and what's what in the race for the Supercross Championship. The Supercross, the attention returns to the road race course tomorrow and a whole lot of excitement. 11 o'clock in the morning, we're going to kick it off with the opening round of the AMA Superbike Championship for 2006. Matt Maladin starting from the pole. The day will conclude with the Formula Extreme Battle. That uh, is, of course, the Daytona 200 and sandwiched into the middle. An exciting weekend of dirt tracking out at the uh, stadium. Tune in tomorrow, 11 in the morning, and then just stay till it's over. It's all going to be good. Tonight, of course, the focus is on Supercross. The results of semi number one, top five go to the main, and those are the five. But the big story here tonight is Chad Reed. He came in as the championship point leader. And he has suffered an injury and did not complete his heat race. And now the question is, what happens next? Let's get the story. Chad Reed is putting his bike in the starting gate behind us as we speak. He will run in this semi. We're with Jim Perry, the team manager for Yamaha. Jim, bring us up to date. What happened in that heat race and where do you guys go from here? Well, uh, he got an okay start and crashed in the second corner and banged up his bike pretty good and he was unable to continue so we went back fixed it and we're going to go through the semi uh, to get in the main event and salvage some points for tonight is that what it is all about kind of salvaging points can you tell us how injured is he and how much pain is he in well he's in a lot of pain and uh, he has a pretty good separated shoulder but you know he's he uh, doesn't want to give up this points lead and he wants to do what he can to uh, keep it going and daytona has been very good to him he's won the last two races here well, and Krista, just alongside Chad Reed in the gate is the number 199 of Travis Pastrana. Two riders, incredibly fast, different challenges ahead of them. Both have huge hearts. I mean, these are both just champions. Both these guys had frustrating uh, heat races, both for different reasons. Like you said, both ends of the spectrum. Chad Reed trying to keep us in this 2006 championship points hunt. Travis Pastrana just trying to put it in this main event just for his own pride. You need a top five. It's what you have to have. You have to have a top five, and you know, and normally you would say no problem, but both these guys are banged up, beat up, and it's gonna be, it's gonna take a lot of heart, both these guys getting that main event. Here's a look at the rest of the field in this semi, and there's some other very talented riders in here, including Tyler Evans, one of the fastest privateers. Yeah, Tyler's had a strong season this year. He's put it in the main event a number of times, had some good finishes, and. These semifinals throughout the, the weekends have been very challenging and very uh, some great racing. Jeff DeMent, Michael Brown in this one as well. Reed with a good start. He's got the whole shot. Can he hang on? 
Oh, that had to hurt, Denny. Yeah, both these guys are banged up. It's great to see Michael Brown there on that number three rock star Suzuki. He almost got the whole shot on that 252 stroke Suzuki. But just like that, the two guys from the very outside with the sore shoulders, Chad Reed and Travis Pastrana picking up the pace. And it's, this, I think that's about one of the first times Chad Reed's made it to the whoops all night long. He couldn't make it to the whoops in practice one. Dean and Ride practice two. And just seeing he can make just this one lap. Man, what a heart on this guy. What a champion. Chad Reed on the 22 is your leader. You're riding on board with Travis Pastrana, who holds down second place. Michael Brown is in third. I mean, the ironic thing about this whole scenario, Ralph, is, is Chad Reed comes in here with the points lead in the, in the Daytona, separates his shoulder just a few days, yesterday, actually, and is, is almost unable to race. David Volman, 2002, same thing happening now, but comes in with a points lead, separates his shoulder coming to the event. Ricky Carmichael capitalizes on, on both these mistakes. Chad Reed not only trying to make the main because he wants to hang on to a points lead, but he's got a streak going. Chad has 57 consecutive starts in main events, has never missed a main event. 52 of those 57 main event starts ended up with podiums. A tremendous stretch run. Chad's done a great, I mean, since he's come to the U.S., he's done an incredible job. Supercross champion under his belt. Guy always comes on very strong at the end of the season. And we're seeing right now that he's willing to do anything it takes to salvage his points lead. I mean, this is not very often you get into the, to become a points leader in a Supercross class. It's one of the most challenging series in the world. Chad's doing everything he can to salvage this and get through this race with some needed points. But he's got to go home, and you see him dangling that arm. He's got to go home and regroup, and he's got to do this again next week in Orlando. All right, Denny, based on the riding you're seeing, how he's performing here, what do you see about his riding style, his technique, that makes you feel that he's either healthier or better than you thought he would be or in more shape than you thought he would be? Well, he's riding. I mean, I didn't think he even was able to ride. And each you talked to him in that opening interview, he wasn't even sure he was going to be able to ride. But the big thing between Chad Reed, Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, each race, they're a good three seconds a lap faster than the rest of the pack. That's a pretty big window for Chad to kind of slow down a little bit, ease into his pace, and, and still run top five. And that's what he has to do tonight, top five, if he has any hopes of holding on to this championship run. This semi is six laps. The main event is 20. Yeah, that's uh, that's huge. 20 laps is it's 20 laps in a 250 or Supercross 450. That's a man's class, and uh, you know right now he's running a smooth, consistent pace. I think if he can just keep from making that mistake, that sudden jarring that he might catch by surprise and, and do the, the the jolt of pain, he could get through this all right in this main event. But I'm just impressed that he's getting through this six lap semi and. And, and Travis Pastrana as well, right behind him. Both these riders doing everything they can and just showing how big of hearts these two athletes have. Here's Krista with more. Well, this semi is setting up exactly how Chad Reed wanted. When he went down early in that heat race, he decided to just regroup, head back to the truck, and get ready for this semi, knowing that he couldn't go full force went all the way from the back of the pack to be able to advance in. And remember, he sat out a second practice. That was planned. In the first practice, he just went out, found his lines, decided how well or how, how tough he could get through the whoop section. And then they planned on sitting out that second practice so he could ice his shoulder. He spent this downtime between the heat race and the semi, getting his shoulder retaped, getting rest, to be able to go full throttle for this semi. His trainer, Ralph, is Jeff Spencer. Jeff Spencer works with Lance Armstrong. If Jeff Spencer can get Lance Armstrong to the Tour de France these last few years, I mean, the guy knows how to make an athlete last, get him to his injuries, and uh, obviously he's working with Chad and got him figured out, the Astros medical unit as well, and take their hats off to everyone involved right now. Chad is getting it done and doing what he's got to do to possibly win this championship. Denny, what does this do to the Yamaha factory team, too, as far as the mechanics and the crew back at the truck when they see their rider out here willing to give it literally his all tonight? Well, I think at, at this level, all the teams involved, the, the staff, they're doing everything they can to make their rider the best. And they put in 100% effort. But just like Suzuki with, with Ricky and Yamaha seen with Chad and no doubt Cali with James, they're doing everything they can. And, and it's just an inspiration. And they're they're not going to slack off. You know, instead of maybe staying at, going home an extra hour, these guys are staying in the race shop, putting that extra work, because obviously Chad's doing it as well. Travis Pastrana on the 199 with the white flag out sits solidly in second, which is a transfer spot right to the main event. Mike Brown, Tyler Evans, and Jerry Dosso all hold those Travis or transfer positions. Jeff DeMint on the 38, one spot out of it. He'll have one final shot in the last chance qualifier. 
And if you look at the lap times these guys run right now, Chad Reed's running a 53.9 as fast as, as all, just right there. That's basically what Ivan Tedesco was running in their heat race. And so he's right on pace to keep that podium streak alive. Oh, that's one of those jars right there. You heard the panic rev of that 450 Yamaha. That jarring right there could have put a jolt of pain through him, but this is the last lap, and all he's satisfied, he's going that main event. Checkered flag, Chad Reed. Quite possibly the most impressive ride of the night so far. Here's the battle to the line. Jeff Dement on the yellow bike, trying to get the final transfer position away from Jerry Dostal. Didn't do it. Dostal on the 70 will take the straight trip to the main out of semi number two. Chad Reed, what a run. Chris is there. Yeah, Chad's keeping the helmet on, taking the goggles off. Chad, I know the pain has just got to be incredible, but you really wanted to be able to come back and regroup for the semi. Can you even put into words what kind of pain you're feeling right now? Yeah, that's all I can do right now. So uh, tough it out, you know. I, uh, you know, when I did it, I was like, man, that sucks. I was bummed, and then I thought about my good friend Ernesto, and uh, he's why I'm here. Because I wouldn't put myself through this for nothing, but uh, and a title, you know, we want to want to take this thing and uh, you know get a week a week of healing next week you know I just want to get on the podium uh, just get a good start and uh, just try and make things happen for me be in the right place at the right time Chad you were running some quick laps out there that was a six lap semi can you go 20 laps and be on the podium tonight uh, you know 20 laps is is no problem at all um, problem is is whether the the pain relief that I'm taking can can hang in there for 20 laps but uh, Man, the general will be running, and I'll be fine. You know, it, it really sucks. I want to go out there. I want to charge this track. I want to get amongst it and have some fun. But uh, that's, uh, that's life. That is life indeed. And as he said, he's riding for Ernesto Fonseca tonight. And Ernesto, and many people's thoughts and prayers here this weekend. And Chad Reed using that as his inspiration. Reed's had good runs here, Denny. He's never finished off the podium. Two wins in a second and three tries here at the Big D. Yeah, this one's going to be incredible. I mean, I'm, I take my hat off to him. The guy's amazing. I always said the guy never gives up. He keeps working. That's why he always seems to come on to end the Supercross season because he starts figuring things out. This is just a huge roadblock for him. And, you know, I'm impressed. He just smashed right through that roadblock, and he's going to try and get it done in 20 laps. And if this thing works out, this could be one of the most inspirational championship stories we've ever seen. A separated shoulder, and he just won a semi at the toughest Supercross track on the tour. These are the five riders going on to the main event. When they get there, Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, they'll be waiting. Ivan Tedesco and an injured, beaten, battered Chad Reed riding with a lot of inspiration, trying to make the podium. And of course, you're going to see it all right here on Speed Channel. What a night we have in store, working our way towards the main here at Daytona. Wednesday night on Speed. Pigs. Demanding Supercross race in the world, always won by the strongest rider. Inspired by an injured comrade, tonight a triumvirate of tough guys come to this race locked in a tight title battle. Chad Reed, winner of two straight at Daytona, riding hurt. The big question tonight, can Reed hang on? And James Stewart, his only Daytona start he won two years ago in lights. I'm the new king of Daytona. Defending series champ Ricky Carmichael has never come into Daytona without the points lead. This year, he's playing a bit of catch up. Two objectives for RC tonight, take the point lead and win a record fifth time here. I can't wait, I love this race. So with Reed doing damage control, RC racing for a place in history, and Bubba hoping to prove he's finally for real, it is time for the 36th Daytona Supercross main event, and this crowd is ready. What a night it's been so far. There's Bubba Stewart getting ready to do the business. The speed he showed in his heat race, just dazzling. And Ricky Carmichael's tongue hanging out, though. Remember, it is a 20-lap main event. Travis Pastrana backflipping his way into uh, history. Nobody had ever done a backflip at Supercross before, and if the officials have their way, nobody ever will again. It's all gonna play out shortly. The big question, of course, is Reed's injury. And now, you know what? I think I'm having a flashback. A quick look back to last.
last year. You're on board with Ricky Carmichael for the start of the main event here at Daytona. He got out decently, but Chad Reed, number 22, came into the race trailing by 35 points, needs to beat Ricky. And he put the heat on. Carmichael trying to maintain the pace, trying to figure out where all this Reed speed came from. Look at RC through the main straightaway. Whoops on the ground, on the pavement. Here's another look, not that complicated a section. Caught the hay bale with the front wheel, and Ricky is on the ground. Chad Reed grabs a handful of throttle and wins the Daytona Supercross. It was huge at the time. Man, how he wishes that uh, scene were going to play out again tonight. He may work a miracle, but Chad Reed, if you just joined us, has a separated shoulder and is riding badly hurt. And Travis Pastrana has withdrawn, uh, we understand, from the main event. Maybe my favorite thing about covering the, uh, the Supercross down here is the shot from the Rhino Cam. We call it the Rhino Cam because of the vehicle from whence it comes. The, way, the opportunity to see how the bikes work through those groups that the Rhino Cam provides is just something you don't get anywhere else. And so we wanted to pay appropriate tribute and explain to you that we call it the Rhino Cam because it's a Yamaha Rhino and it has nothing to do with the profile of Chris Jones, the man who does the shooting in the back of the Rhino Cam. Nice work, Chris Jones. And the fans love it, too. The fans love to be on the Rhino Cam. All right, let's go up top side. Ralph, Denny, this ought to be good. Oh, Dave, it's going to be spectacular. Maybe not as spectacular as the Rhino Cam shot, but, Denny, we've got the makings of a great one. And the plot twists this season have been unbelievable, and tonight we got more of them. Well, James Stewart hasn't lost a race that he hasn't crashed in. He's just got to get to the first turn. He's been in lane there four times so far this season. Here's our Dunlop start list. Stewart is here. Ivan Tedesco won his heat race. Ricky Carmichael, all the makings of a great one. Michael Byrne on the factory Kawasaki will join them here as well. Do you think, as we look at the rest of the start list here, that Chad Reed can tough it out for 20 laps here? Whenever I say Chad's out of something, the guy proves me wrong. You can't doubt Chad. The guy's amazing. He's got so much heart. We've seen it in that semifinal. His goal right now, we thought was top five. He's running a top three pace. He's running Tedesco pace, Travis Preston pace. He could finish this night on the box and come out of here not losing all the points we thought he might. Well, before we can drop the gate here, let's touch base with Chris Devoto one more time for a progressive direct pre-race report. I'm so glad you guys are touching base with me down here. You know, Ralph Denny, you've been talking a lot about the softer setup that the guys need here because of this kind of indoor, outdoor track. We want to kind of follow up on that. Of course, we're talking about the suspension. Two of the quick fixes the mechanic can make and have made all day refer to the forks and the springs, the compression and reaction of those. The way they fix those are little adjusters. You'll see them up here. We're looking at Eric Vallejo's bike right up here and right down here. This red nut right down here. Talking about what they do is the compression involves softer or stiffer reaction, quicker or slower. They work hand in hand. These are just quick fixes they can make throughout the day to keep that setup soft, but allow them to still use their super cross or indoor setup so they don't give up too much, especially on these tough jumps. And one of the things that we've talked about tonight too, Denny, is you've got to find a balance between a soft setup to deal with the rough racetrack, but you still got to get it over the jumps, so you can't go too soft. Well, it's something these guys can work on. That's something Ricky Carmichael can fall back on experience. James Stewart, he's only been here once. It's a little bit more difficult for him to fall back on experience to see what some of his setups and settings were in the past. Ah, uh, but that one time James Stewart was here was on a Supercross lights machine two years ago, and he took the win the only time he's raced here at Daytona. Check out where these guys are lined up right here, Ralph. You got Chad Reed right there. You got James right there and Ricky right there. What Chad's going to probably hope to do is get a jump on these two guys right here, Trevor Preston and Jeff Gibson, and maybe shut the door on Carmichael. If he can push Carmichael back some spots and let Stewart get out front, that's his big thing. That's a three-point swing. Reed wants right up. Reed's Bubba Stewart's biggest fan. 36 times we've come to Daytona. No venue in the Supercross Series has hosted more. We're ready to drop the gate here at Daytona. The Daytona Supercross by Honda. Here we go. James 
still does something he's had a hard time with in recent weeks, Danny. He takes the whole shot at turn one. And Chad Reed comes out second. Man, the guy is not happy. He did exactly kind of what I thought he got out in front of the two hunts. Who directly back in front of Ricky Carmichael. Ricky played mad. He stopped, went to the very inside of the first turn, avoided all the carnage, and comes out third. The setting is set. Michael Burn is in fourth. Travis Preston on the back three. Hot wide in fifth. Chad Reed, look at what he's at right now in second place. We weren't even sure. He wasn't even sure he was going to make this man event. He can go to right. And right now, he's in the thick of things right behind James Stewart, right in front of Ricky Carmichael. Now, if Chad Reed can hold off Ricky Carmichael long enough and allow James Stewart to break away, open up a decent sized lead, and make Ricky have chases him down, that's going to be nothing but to Chad Reed's benefit. He needs James to beat Ricky, and that's going to be a three point swing. And right now, Chad Reed's going to need every play can. And that guy, he's riding right in the thick of things. He did not lose any ground to Chad. He held Ricky off. His shoulder hold on for 20 laps. Chad Reed's not out of the pocket. He gets second this game. Right? That would be unbelievable, Denny, if Chad Reed could come in here. When we rolled into the racetrack today, we thought Chad Reed could even right tonight. And here he is sitting second to me. Yeah, the stage is set. He's in second very early in the race, obviously, but... If you're going to do something, you do it right, you do it early in the main event, he's doing exactly what he wanted to do. He shut down Carmichael down the short straight. He's in between the Carmichael and James Stewart. Stewart is already opening up a pretty decent size lead right now. Over three seconds, everything's looking right now. Chad is there. Here comes Carmichael. Out of that three Suzuki. Right up alongside Reed. The back for second is on. A little bit of contact. Carmichael cuts it back to the inside and takes a position away from Reed. But boy, Reed hasn't lost any speed. He's hanging right with the time champ. You see Stewart go by in the other direction. Now, can Carmichael break away and run it now? And Stewart is down. Stewart is down. You saw the yellow flag pop up. Stewart is down. And not rushing back to the motorcycle. That was an intense sex right there. They're jumping very deep into the in the corner. They're going wide. You see, you see where this callus is laying upside down. Oh, the burn. So here it is. James Stewart coming directly at into your living room. Jumps into this corner and basically just goes over the bars and gets oh, this violent crash. Uh, whipped over the tough blocks and down he goes. Unbelievable turn of events. Oh, Denny, that's one of the most violent. Crashes we've seen all year. He's really, he hits that kicker right now. He just knows that right now. He luckily gets over the front of that book. He didn't go over the bars. It just violently whips him over the tough block. Just barely missing our cameraman. Unbelievable. We have talked about how the series has seen nothing but plot twists all season. James is back up riding. He has regained the main out front, but are not out front. And last, he's got a long ways to go before he's going to get any points in this main event. And Carmichael now out front. Chad Reed in second. Unbelievable. I, I, you don't know what to say about this series. The way the racing has been this year. Ricky Carmichael was third going into the first corner. Now he's leading here at Daytona. Maybe on his way to the points lead and some history. Stay with us. Across by Honda, Ricky Carmichael leads here in the main event. Chad Reed is chasing him from second, but look at the battle for third. On the green Kawasaki, it's Michael Byrne, and right behind him comes the number 11 factory Honda of Travis Preston. What a great ride right now for Travis Preston. We saw him last weekend. Basically, whiskey throttled off the back of his Honda. The bike launches into the wall, and, and Travis he takes Preston his spot. is now bound for a podium position. Great job for Travis Preston rebounding from last weekend. Krista with more. This is a great battle between Travis Preston and Michael Byrne. Preston actually just overtook him, and then Byrne cut in on the inside and got that spot back. Travis Preston raised his seat. He was using a higher seat. He started that last week in Indy. He said it's the seat, the height that he used to use a couple years back. I asked him today, I said, are you still sticking with that high seat? He said, absolutely. He feels so much more comfortable on the bike, and this is the race he's been waiting for. And here he comes, Chris, trying to use it to his advantage, trying to go to the outside there. Can't get the pass made there, but he's charging through this rhythm section, coming right up alongside Byrne. Can't get cut back to the inside the way he had hoped. Now he tries it again. Here he comes. 
Travis Preston at 6'3", 190 pounds. He's going to need everything he can to make him feel more comfortable on a motorcycle. And look at the lines these riders are using. They're using every line in the track. They're being meticulous, picking their lines very well. And right now, Travis Preston getting the upper hand of Michael Byrne. I talked with Preston earlier today, and there goes Michael Byrne right back by him. About his crash last weekend, we were laughing. We seen the crash that Travis Pastrana did earlier today. And I go, Travis, which one was, was more up goofy there? Was that your whiskey foul in the stands last week? Or maybe Travis has messed up backflip? He goes, no, my crash last weekend was way worse. This battle for third continues. Boy, look at Preston get a great drive out of the corner through that rhythm section there, Denny. He is very strong, but he seems to get bogged down every time in that corner right there. He knows he, he comes in on the outside line, but it just leaves the door open for Michael Byrne. Byrne's able to shut the door, and Travis, uh, and Travis basically just looks up. He knows it's going to happen, but right here, this is the section he passed him last lap. Byrne goes a little bit tighter inside. You're just seeing how difficult this track is, but how challenging it is. You're able to use so many different lines. These guys are using the entire racetrack and battling back and forth, having so much respect for each other. Neither one of these guys using doing anything too aggressive on the other guy, being able to trust the other guy. You talked about the height and size of Travis Preston. What kind of advantages and disadvantages does that body structure give you? Well, I used to believe that being the taller on the motorcycle was a, was a benefit, was an advantage. But when you start seeing how tall these guys are, like Travis was on a 6'3", Travis Preston 6'3", I think when you make a mistake and you tend to get off the side of the motorcycle, you have all that leverage pulling the motorcycle down, where if you're a small, compact rider like Ricky Carmichael, I don't think it's quite as pronounced when you make a mistake because you don't have all that body weight throwing you sideways. So lately, I think that being tall has been a little bit of a disadvantage for some of these riders. Their lap times are about two seconds slower than the man leading here right now, Ricky Carmichael. Look at that, though. Travis Preston has slowly gotten slower each lap. He's gone from a 55.3. He's up to a 56 flat. And right now, he's starting to lose a little bit of touch on Michael Byrne. Well, the battle for third continues between Byrne and Preston while Ricky Carmichael leads here at Daytona. We'll be right back. And here at the World Center of Racing, Daytona International Speedway. It's a Daytona Supercross by Honda, and it's a Suzuki out front with Ricky Carmichael on top. He came here tonight looking for a couple of things. One, the points lead, and quite possibly his fifth Daytona Supercross win, and he's well on his way to both of those here tonight. Going through the section we saw last year, we went down trying to catch Chad Reed. Right now, the tables have turned. He's the man out front. Chad Reed's in second, and Ricky Carmichael currently riding a flawless race, trying to give Suzuki their first win here since 1981, trying to be the first rider to win five times and be the first rider to win it on three different brands. If it's going to be one guy to do it, Ricky Carmichael, you can't bet against him. Just adding to the legendary nickname, which is GOAT, which stands for greatest of all time. Now, flying through the nighttime sky is this man, the number 22 of Chad Reed. And as good a story as Ricky Carmichael is coming into this race, Denny, I'm not so sure even everything we just talked about tops the performance of what Chad Reed is giving us here tonight. It's amazing. We saw Grant Langston do it in the Lights Nationals a few years ago on an outdoor track. Chad Reed's doing it on a Supercross track with some of the biggest bumps, some of the biggest ruts, and some of the biggest jumps. And Unbelievable. Chad Reed has virtually kept himself in a championship hunt. Turned the tables. He's running consistent 55 lap times, right exactly what Michael Byrne and Travis Preston are, the guys behind him. If he keeps his pace, stays strong, stays focused, Chad Reed's going to come out here second place, only two points down of Ricky Carmichael. And as good a story as these two have been, unfortunately for this next rider, things have gone completely the other direction. James Stewart came in here as the third member of the title chase, had a great opportunity to take a win, take a big jump in the points, and instead, he is now making his way up from dead last, and here's how he got to that position. It all started when the gate dropped, and Denny, he got one of the best starts he's had all year. You see Chad Reed right there on the screen. He's gonna move over a little bit on Carmichael, trying to pinch the door. Stewart, on the other hand, just comes flying in the first turn. Not only does he not crash, he grabs the whole shot. That's a progressive direct hold shot replay right there. 
But then watch what happens after that. After we get into racing and things settle down, one of the nastiest crashes of the year. These guys are jumping way in this corner, trying to avoid the bumps. He clears the bump, but his front end tucks, and he just is violently, like you said, thrown over the top of the Honda Tough Block. He regains the race in a distant 20th. He's done a commendable job. He's currently up to 13th. He's doing everything he can to salvage these points, but yet again, James Stewart, we find him on the ground. James Stewart has battled his way back to 13th, though, Denny. An impressive run, because when he got up, he looked awful woozy. James Stewart continues to try to keep himself alive in the title fight here in his home state of Florida. The Daytona Supercross continues right after these words. There's Ricky Carmichael working his way around the track here at Daytona. Trying to win his fifth Daytona Supercross by Honda here tonight. The rider from Florida. In front of his hometown fans and friends. A lot of family members here cheering on RC tonight. Oh, and you can see RC coming off the pegs a little bit. He's still running hard. His best lap time of 53. And he's putting down consistent laps, staying right there, because he knows Chad Reed is charging hard. Another rider who's put laps in in the 53 range. In fact, the only two riders to have done that. But you know what, Denny? The only rider who's gone better than that, James Stewart has a lap of 52. As he tries to work his way up through the field, Stewart now up to 10th. Trying to gain as many points back as he can in this fight with five to go here tonight at Daytona. It's just uh, a shame and amazing the fact that James can be so fast and just have those little mental breakdowns that turn out to be so costly. And right now, Ricky Carmichael is showing that he is obviously the man to beat in this title chase. Although Chad Reed, with his heart and what he's accomplished tonight, you can't count him out, you never can, but Ricky Carmichael trying to get his ninth win of the season. Ricky I mean, told the us sixth win of the season. I'm sorry. Yeah, and there's there's James Stewart right there, and there's Carmichael trying to put him a lap down. 